Six o'clock. What's going on? Good morning from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I am Robert Walsh. The madness has begun. The first four games last night. Two more tonight as Wagner took down Howard 71-68. They are moving on. And Colorado State took down Virginia in possibly one of the worst offensive performances seen in March Madness. Virginia is out. Colorado State is in. We've got two more games today as well. Grambling and Montana will start at 540. And Colorado and Boise State at 810 and the titans making a nice addition to their defensive line in signing sebastian joseph day played in 14 games for the chargers two for the 49ers last year grabbing three sacks and three tackles for a loss his experience along the entire defensive line will be extremely valuable for defensive line coach tracy rocker for all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs visit usstn.com breaking news at once on your home for the titans and the vols this is 1045 the zone Wednesday morning, welcome into the middle of your week, the day known as Hump Day in the Music City. RKW is brewed by Eighth and Roast, Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Robert Walsh back at the controls. I'm Will Bowling. We've marked ourselves safe from watching Virginia basketball last night in the NCAA tournament. We get into a big discussion about quarterbacks and the problems that they have in the National Football League as the first four continues tonight and the Nashville Predators are kicking butt and taking names. Mm. Happy Wednesday morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Good morning. Wednesday, y'all. Happy, happy, happy hump day, everybody, yeah. man. Halfway through, some of y'all getting through spring break and some of y'all are wishing your kids are back in school. So, hey, whichever one <laughs> uh, pieces you best, Get the kids okay? back in school, please. Get them back in school. <laughs> I, I'm very appreciative of the light traffic, though, going yeah, to Sumner County. I bet. It has been amazing, okay? It's a world of a difference, huh? It, it is a world of difference. Everybody's in Florida right now, okay? In the <laughs> panhandle. <laughs> So I'll take it. So good that um, so I'm teaching my my oldest how to drive. Oh, so have you taken him on the interstate? Yet? Well, and that's where okay. um, I'm starting to say, hey, uh, this week might be the week we get your first dab at going, doing some highway driving. So I I've, I've been back and forth like, all right, it's it's just the moment. And the best the, the best answer to that is. There's no real right moment. Just put him on the friggin' highway and just go about it. Would he be nervous? Do you know? Has he spoke about uh, that? He's been Joe Cool about it. I got to okay. give it to him. Okay. He's been Joe Cool about it so far. Uh, but I think the biggest thing, and I remember it for myself too, is turns and gas. It's the yeah. biggest thing that gets you. How to figure out how to turn and how to gas it and when to brake and stuff like that. I've been chirping to him like, hey, you got to fill the car, fill the road. I'm like, ain't no other way to do that other than reps. And highway reps might be the best right now. Probably you just yeah, like you said, you just got to get them out there. That was like me with the parallel part, the parking part. Yeah, I was like, okay, I just gotta, I just gotta do it. The fear's got to go away because, you know, now I'm a master parallel parker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, they got cars that'll do it for you now That's too, true. which is crazy. Yeah, uh, I, I'll never forget though. Learning how to drive was was I was so eager, but I was also so. I was I messed up so bad the first time. Nervous. Like I drove at like twelve years old and then I didn't drive again until like I was like fifteen, sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> because lying. I was so bad at it the first time around. Do you guys remember the exact place that you drove for the first time? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Where was it? I was in Covington, Tennessee. I actually drove Where specifically. To, where specifically? I was uh at I was in the tenth grade, Covington, Tennessee, and driving to the driver center. I remember mm-hmm. turning right. I remember going down the Highway 51 in Covington, 
turning left up the street where the high school was, turning right by the driver center, and go then chargers. having to, yeah, go <laughs> charges, then having to back up into a parking space. I was so nervous about making sure I hit the blinkers, going up the right way, going down the right way. Yes, I remember specifically and vividly where I was, and it was a nervous wreck. I remember walking into the building, sitting down to take my test, and mm-hmm. I think I missed like four questions. You can miss six or something like that. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I remember everything about it. Yep. I went in the Brentwood Baptist parking lot in Brentwood. Did you? Off of Concord Road. And it is as big as an airport, which is something I said when I was a kid. That place <laughs> is so big that you can drive around that parking lot and not see a soul and feel like you're in a little mini city. But uh, I remember when I got my driver's license, I went down. The thing, the hack to do was to go to Columbia here in Middle Tennessee. If you went to Williamson County, you would wait hours. Mm -hmm. And that's the county I grew up in. And I went down there, and the guy looked down at my driver's license form and said, you're from Williamson County? And we said, yep. He goes, well, we're taking the short route. You're going to pass this. This will be easy. And (laughs) we took one square. I was probably in the car for three total minutes. And the guy was like, all right, yeah, you're good. You can have your license. Why, Why was that the case? I don't know. Oh, man. I don't know, but uh, we got in the car and he was like, yeah, the guy before you, uh, or, 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 I remember specifically, he was like, the girl before you tried to turn left on a, uh, on a red light oh, gosh. A- in an intersection. So uh, she did not pass as quickly as you did. Whoopsies. Literally, I turned the car on, knew how to use the blinkers, went to one stoplight, made a correct turn. He was like, all right, turn around. You'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, oh my. I think that, um. Once you hit the age of, like, 75, you need to retake your driver's test. You think so? Uh, Let's just say I have ran into, maybe it's recently, (laughs) but I do find uh, recently I've been behind cars that are barely moving, and I'm wondering what's going on. Are they okay? Are they passed out in the driver's seat? And then I drive past them, and what is, who is it? I don't want to say what is it. That's rude. Yeah. Who is it? It's probably a 70-plus driver. And I love 70-plus people. <laughs> but on the roads, me. I don't know if they should be out there. Hey, me, me and Papa are going to call in and talk bad to you this morning. Watch. Sure. <laughs> now, there are some sharp 70-plus-year-olds on the road, too. Yeah. So I don't nah. want to put them all in the category. But recently, I've been running into some some slugs out there. Yeah, uh, no <laughs> doubt. Well, I ran into one yesterday on uh, Vietnam Vets. It wasn't them. It was a truck trying to get over to the right lane like they supposed to, okay? And then there's this Ford Flex, man, that just comes out and just pass everybody. Oh, no. And the dude Flexing. in the tr- in the Dodge truck is trying to get over. Like, he, he legitimately is trying to get over. So much so that he slowed down way too much. But this car behind us, this Ford SUV comes up behind us and just zooms past everybody and a little, 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 little chaos on the road swerves. I'm talking about within two feet of the truck just to show them move out of my See? way. And I was just like, when I say hammer the left lane, this ain't what I mean, okay? And, of course, that was when I was thinking about, well, RJ, it's time for you to get on the highway. And it wasn't. And I was just like, come on, man. So you left lane hammers out there, too. Y'all got to be careful, careful, although I brag on y'all all all the time. In the FNM Bank chat, you can join the discussion, Facebook Live, YouTube, Twitter, or Twitch. And Eddie writes in on Facebook and says, I taught my daughter to drive at that same church on Concord Road. Mm. I was not the only one. Popular spot. I remember my old roommate and my best friend growing up, we went to church here downtown, but we still lived south. And... His dad one day after church just threw him the keys. He had never driven before. I was like, all right, you're getting us home. He was like, okay, sounds good. See, <laughs> Trial by fire. <laughs> it is. It's two different worlds. But the same thing happens to people when it comes down to swimming, too. Man, how'd you learn how to swim? Man, my dad my just dad threw me in the deep end. <laughs> My dad would do that, and yeah. then he would stand in the in the water and be like, all right, come on. And then he would keep backing up and keep backing up like, no, come here. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm drowning. Me and water don't mix well, though. Hey. I almost drowned when I was, like, small. Did you really? Thank God for my friend Jill. I remember it to this day. Oh, I was man. going down. Jack there, too? She, she, no, no Jack. <laughs> no Jack. Jack. That was a Ramon Jack. Foster comment. Right Jill, Jill, Jill probably would have been uh, make me laugh distracted so if Jack was there. So oh, good thing Jack humor. wasn't there. <laughs> Let's go to Woody and Jolton first up on the phones this morning. What's up, Woody? Hey, not much. Y'all doing all right today? Yes, good morning, Woody. Yeah, 
Yeah, I was going to tell you my first driving experience is I was probably about 12 years old. My old man had been at the bar all day, so I got to drive home from the bar. <laughs> I, I've heard that Damn, happen. Woody. No, you not, Woody. I've recently heard that happening, okay? Yeah. Like, no, I, I, I'm 50 years old, so it's been a while since it happened. Well, well, things have not changed, okay? I'm glad you made it home and you're 50 <laughs> and you're still driving to this day, man. Hey, no, acc- no accidents either. I'm knocking on wood Knock for you, right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank yes. you for the call. Appreciate it, Woody. Knock on wood. Stay safe out there. I, I, I should have asked him, was he a farm kid, though, too? Mm. Because those are the ones that start driving, like, super early. My granddad has a farm in West Tennessee, and my uncles and was driving at, like, 8, 9, 10 sure. years old. Uh, yeah. So being a 12-year-old driving for the first time from the bar, real questions, That's... Woody. I got so many follow-ups now. Yeah, Did you he really make do. you That's what? Right. That's why, why we you, moved on. Yeah, why did you go to the bar with your dad, or did you walk to the bar to get your dad's car? Like, right? it's so many questions now. 615-737-1045. Coming up this morning, Jerry Palm of CBS Sports, a bracket expert and college hoops writer, will join us at 720. We'll talk about Tennessee's draw through the Midwest region and what the toughest region is in the NCAA tournament that got started Last night, a big discussion on quarterbacks coming up at 820 this morning and why stats say the NFL has a quarterback problem, but is it a talent issue or a development issue? That's coming up at 820 this morning. And Rhett Bryan of Titans Radio begins our weekly looks at positions in the 2024 NFL draft class. And we're going to continue that QB's conversation with Rhett and talk quarterbacks. In hour number four, and take a look at all of them who are under the microscope at this point of the draft process. Join the show in the FNM Bank chat on 104.5 The Zone TV and right here on the 104.5 The Zone app as well. Or coming up next, Clemson becomes the latest school to sue the NCAA. What does it mean for the near future of college sports? We'll talk about it next. Fellas, if you've been feeling tired and grumpy, have noticed a lack of motivation and drive, you you might have low T, okay? Low testosterone levels can cause weight gain, loss of muscle mass, and so much more. I recommend to you Low T Center. That's why I get my levels checked, and they make it quick and easy, too, man, to get your levels checked. And it's only 25 bucks. And with their on-site lab, you'll get results back quick in about 25 minutes. Most insurance uh, is also accepted for the treatment. Simply go to LowTCenter.com now to book your appointment on Online, Low T Center, reinventing men's health care. It's Ramon Foster for Hiller Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electrical, man. I'm here to tell you that March is Happy Hiller Golden Ticket Sweepstakes, okay, which means you can win. And all you got to do to win is this, enter to win at HillerGoldenTicket.com. All you got to do is enter your email, and you autom- automatically enter to win something. Prizes include a $5,000 Hiller gift card, or you can also get a $1,000 Hiller gift card, or be one of 10 happy Hiller Club memberships that are passed out, or just simply take advantage of the zero interest financing for 48 months on select new HVAC systems, or 36 months on tankless water heaters and whole home generators. Don't miss on this. Enter to win now at HillerGoldenTicket.com.
Wednesday morning on RKW, Ramon, Kayla, and Will is brewed by 8th and Rose, cultivating community by the cup. You can find your favorite retail bag of 8th and Rose coffee in every local Kroger and Whole Foods as well. I was at the Capital View Publix the other day. I saw some 8th and Rose coffee there. Oh, yeah. really? Almost brought some in here because we are running low. Little low. Stock is low. 615-737-1045. Our number, Amon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Will Bowling with you. Our question of the morning on the phone lines and on Twitter, at Ramon Kayla Will. What is the best month in sports? Mm. We might be in the middle of it right now, or we might be on the precipice. Good word choice for 620 in the morning. Thanks, Will. For... <laughs> The best month in a couple of days. But what is the best month in sports? I love October um, because you get the infusion of, like, football is obviously in session with both the NFL and college. But you get the World Series with October baseball. Um, You get, let's see, what else is going on during October I guess those are like the two bigger ones. Well, Conference football, yeah, NFL yeah, football. exactly. Hockey begins and, in October. And hockey begins. That's where it was. Yeah. For me, I'm going to be selfish. I'm going to be shallow as heck, okay? You going with your birthday month? No. <laughs> September. Yeah. Period. Mm-hmm. Just getting, getting I, I think the appreciation of getting past <laughs> June and July. Truth. August. And the kickoff of football, as far as officially it being high school football being kicked off on Fridays, I can hear the sounds from my house. I love that. And it's crazy. I, I say college football by that time, conference plays kicked off in September, and then give me NFL kickoff. Mm-hmm. Those three right there get me. And, of course, you can say Super Bowl, all playoffs in December, all that type of stuff. There is no season to me, no month that signifies it more than September football. I love it. I think April is a really good sports month. You going to say the Masters? April is Final Four, Masters, Major League Baseball begins, end of year hockey, end of year NBA, and Champions League. That's a good point. And soccer. Because you have Champions League knockout rounds and the quarterfinals that are always the first week in April. Mm -hmm. So for me as a soccer fan, that is a great pick. And you have the end of uh, European leagues as well. I would say October is a close second. March is up there. January is about to get a lot better, though, with the additional college football playoff games that we have. Right. Um, we already got one tweet that said the week of Christmas. So I guess December. Mm-hmm. The week of Christmas is, is that, I mean, we're talking about like, like bowl bowls? season. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm guess. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. NFL okay. football, sure. yeah. Christmas NBA, hockey, all of those things. Mm-hmm. That's that's true. I mean, we can go. If we really going into the weeds of that one, we're talking about like last week in November, going into December, the entire month, too. I mean, golly. Most December, people at and home. And you're always feeling good in December because it's like too. the holidays. Well, yeah. not I, I won't speak for everyone, but usually I have that, that nice feeling during December. I just feel like uh, when the summer hits, man, there's nothing better than, like, watching football season. I I say as far as America is concerned, like, there is no season like football season. And that kicks off to me in, like, September. September. Like, because everything changes. People become friends again. These drafts that you do on these these leagues. uh, And and just everybody's hype about their team because Mm -hmm. football just drives us into – overdrive in that month man absolutely love it and then as you get past all the fluff too of the summer yeah i'll, I'll go april because you do have some element of football you do with the draft, draft yeah in april that's the always bird fun. man on youtube said choosing a month without football is wild <laughs> and i, I, I kind of laugh now that at that now because games wise yeah you know you don't have it year round but honestly yeah. like covering football from this perspective, mm-hmm. it's year round. It is. The NFL got something every month. Yeah. Except for what does it have in July? Mid June well, through middle of July. That's There's the nothing dead between mid June to middle of July. This year we get Olympics. In Paris. Oh yeah. 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 Radio topic wise, we don't get Olympics. <laughs> but we don't. I, know. I wonder what like, as a track and field person, we get Olympics. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, I got swimming. It. I'll I'll ask our sick and shut in behind the glass real quick, man. If if we do incorporate the like American football in the Olympics. Will you try to make the American team? No. <laughs> Did you see the video of Terry Kill oh uh, doing routes against France's top 
corners oh, yesterday. He broke his wee ankles. <laughs> Are you serious? It went about how you'd expect. <laughs> well, it's Tyreek. Look it up. It went about as Where you was expect. it at? In France? Everywhere. Well, yeah. Oh. NFL Europe stuff is starting back up. Okay. That okay. European league, I, I believe, is why. But it may have just been a promotion for the flag football stuff that's starting as well. Isn't USFL and... Um, the other league that combined Sorry. XFL. They're XFL both the com- UFL now. Yeah, and they they come I think next next weekend. Oh, I don't know. Something. Uh it's real soon. That's I, below I my that pay much. grade. People <laughs> always say that's above my pay grade. That's below my <laughs> pay grade. <laughs> Respectfully. <laughs> they got some nice regional quarterbacks in that league though, too. We'll yes, see what it looks mm-hmm. like. The Rock is behind it big time though. Yeah. We'll yep. see. Birmingham last year's champs. Yeah. Look at me knowing they about were. that. They were. <laughs> Couldn't be my knowledge. Yeah, they hey, could not hey, care less. Hey. <laughs> they were. Paid attention to it the all, home, baby. They were the home team. They were. Because uh, everything was based out of uh, Birmingham. No, my friend Scooby played day. on that team. That's why I said that. I covered him in Arizona. Uh-huh. And he was actually pretty funny character, too. Was he? Uh, mullet, you know. Yeah. Had it all. I was so. about to ask, was Shaggy with him? But never mind. That's <laughs> some, some weeds right there. Some Alvin weeds. in Nashville, first up on the phone, 615-737-1045. What's up, Alvin? Hey, good morning, ladies. How y'all doing? We're Great. Good. Good. What up, Alvin? I got I, I got two questions for y'all. Again, uh, the first one is, uh, yesterday on 3 they kept talking about uh, Minnesota having the two picks and they may move up. And they said the Sykes could be a, a place where they move up. Even if uh, Joe Alt is there, do you go ahead and still take the two ones, or what do you do? And also, uh, how concerned should we be as far as free agency? We have, we still have a lot of holes, and we don't have that many draft picks. How concerned should we be? Because it's not just about starters, but we're talking about depth as well. I hang up the list. Thank you, Alvin. Uh, the price of moving up from 11 to seven is not a first round pick in my opinion. So there is not a good chance that the Vikings are going to give you pick 23 just to go four picks up. Mm -hmm. And they're not moving in front of anyone who is in the quarterback market to go to seven. Now, if they're going to five, they're moving in front of the New York giants or if they go to four, because after the combine, the Arizona Cardinals are now maybe in the trade back market as well. The Titans are not the most sensible place for a trade anymore after the Falcons signed Kirk Cousins because now you are not needing to get in front of Atlanta to get your quarterback. That being said, if you can convince one of those teams that someone else is in the market for seven and that Denver wants to trade for seven or Las Vegas wants to trade for seven, then maybe Minnesota wants to pay you to trade the pick to them and not to Vegas or Denver or someone else by going from 11 to seven, but you have to now fabricate a market that requires and motivates a team to go to seven versus just sitting and waiting where they are. Because essentially that's the only way that a team is going to be motivated to move in front of Atlanta, in front of the jets, in front of the Chicago bears is just to do it. So someone else doesn't, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think Denver, you could, you can't take them completely out of the equation at this point. So, you know, that's a good point as well. I'll say too, on the, pressing the panic button in terms of filling depth and just filling a couple of these positions specifically on defense, there's still time. Like, free agency is now continuing to go on. I mean, you can go and sign these pieces, and you're seeing there's been visits as of late to the Titans. So they're they're having guys come in and visit still. So I think you're going to see some of those positions get filled and then yeah you add your depth those don't have to be great pieces those can be good pieces with depth so I don't think it's at a point right now to push the panic button just because you're a week away from the start of free agency or from when it started no doubt about it there there is depth and that's the thing too where we had the conversation about um Sneed Legeria Sneed also you know Alvin brings up that point as far as there's a lot of other places that have to be fulfilled. And do you want to overfill one spot as far as he's concerned to, and, and still have glaring issues at other spots that probably can't support him the way you need to? You signed a D-tackle yesterday, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, Shell, no, 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 golly. Sebastian, Sebastian Joseph Day, Joseph Day former four, Ram, four, Charger, and 49ers. Four yes. names and one. No, three names. Signed him yesterday. So yep. you have better depth and quality at D-tackle. But again, if you're going to give up 
a, a ton of money and a draft pick for a guy like Legereus Sneed, there's still other spots that, that can't support that type of signing. Now, if it happens, you find a way to work with it. But all in all, when you break down how you build up a team, it may just be spending a million here, a million here, three million there just to get a team to where it's sustainable as far as competition, too, because that's the other side behind it, too, is depth has to be a thing. It can't just be your 11 starters on both mm-hmm. sides playing all the reps. Guys do get injured, and that's why – when you don't pull the, the when you don't actually pull the deal when you pull the deal when it comes to Legarius Need, it makes sense. Is there any scenario where the Titans trade out of seven if Joe Alt is on the board? Ooh. Trade out of seven mean there's is there any run? scenario right. where the Titans trade out of seven if Joe Alt is on the board? I think that's gonna be really tough to do, guys. I, I I get it if it's if they see something they can work with in terms of another tackle that they really like and believe in, then I think yeah. But I think it's really, really hard to pass up on what is argu- arguably the best tackle on the left side in the draft to even get another pick. Now, again, anything is possible, but I'd say that's hard to believe. With the, with the runs that could be made on quarterbacks, and it seems like there's a little bit more fire where there's smoke behind it, I could see it happening. But here's the thing, and I heard this point being made. I don't know who I give credit for on this one, but either way, if it's yours, take credit for it. But at, at what point will you continue to be picking in the top ten and get a guy like this mm-hmm. if he is truly the guy? That's mm-hmm. the question you have to ask yourself. Does it outweigh you sacrificing more picks and not getting the guy that you want? or the guy that everybody says is going to be the dude. And the other pro tip behind that is just because he's a first-rounder doesn't mean it's going to work out. I know he's probably about as as can't-miss as anybody. It's like Jake Matthews coming out years back. You remember him? Of course, yep. son of a legendary player in the league. He was been coached up by Munchak and his uncles and dad for a very long time. He turned into a 10-year player for the Atlanta Falcons. Similar situation, right? You say to yourself, this is a can't-miss guy. He made a couple Pro Bowls and stuff like that, and they got that dude for 10 years as far as Jake Matthews is concerned, right? But at the same sense, Atlanta have netted nothing behind it other than stability and paying him. So when it comes down to getting your dude, if he's as proven as you've seen other guys with that position, you take him um, because it's, you, you don't want to be picking in the top 10 mm-hmm. no more. That's the other thing. And then after the top 10, the quality does fall sometimes. Right. It's like I always look at it like this. You have a really, like, nice, expensive whatever you like, right? A purse, shoes. And then you've got the the pair that looks just like it, but it's it's not the real, real thing. It's like I'm not going to pass over the real, real thing because often that doesn't come my way. Right. Right. You know? I have never bought a purse before, but I will take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you have. I haven't bought many of them that are that nice, but. What? It's it's a matter of where will you be picking again, and do you trust your methods mm-hmm. of of building up and developing? And that to me, I think that's where a lot of this fan base is saying, "Go get out, go get out, go get out." May be a little skewed because in years past, the guys hadn't developed. I heard three HL talking about it yesterday. Like Christian Fulton was a dude at LSU, and somewhat has just turned into a inconsistent guy here. I mean, Corey Davis was a dude coming out of college. Say what you want to do. He was evaluated as a top five pick, and he was. Then he turned into nothing. The ability to really develop guys has been, I think, a black eye here for a very long time. So when it comes down to do you trust the process of what this group is capable of doing, I don't know if you can yet as a fan because you've seen nobody net nothing from you. Look at the last three draft classes except for last year. Who's here? Who can you trust? There's not many. So it makes sense to go get a dude like Joe Alt because everybody in the world is telling us he's the guy, he's the can't miss, and nobody trusts the development here. And it's a new staff now. I know. And now it starts even with that, though. Mm -hmm. We trusted, and Vrabes we trust was a thing. And J-Rob we trust was a thing. We saw J-Rob and Vrabe out there holding bags, thought they were developing guys, and right now we got a group in Rashad Weaver that hasn't been developed the way you need them to. You look at every NPF is yet to make the field the way you need them to. You got a Hassan Haskins that nobody can tell. Where in the hell is he at, right? You got dudes that came up behind him, and it really makes you as a fan have PTSD and saying, man, I don't know about that guy because everybody's telling me he's great. 
And if he's great, then we need him because we don't get nice things like this often. And we can't trust the people that have been developing developing them to be a long stay in our franchise as a, as a as a fan. Well, and you couldn't even keep Isaiah for a year to try to even uh, try to do anything with that guy. He was he, an issue in itself, I mean, too. And a yeah. lot of them have been injured, too. You know, just injury-plagued players. That's why it feels more likely they trade back from 38 than from 7. As deep as the wide receiver class is in the second round, I think you can find a team that is more motivated to move to 38 than they are to the number seven overall pick. If there is a wide receiver they're in love with in the top of the second round, get you another four and move back. Uh, And if teams moving from 11 to seven, you're not going to get much more than maybe a two and more likely a three to move back four spots at that point. Is the difference between the first and second best tackle on the board worth moving four spots? In my opinion, it's not. Not when the number one is Joe Alt. Mm Mm-hmm. 615-737-1045 is our number elsewhere in the sports world yesterday. They're not suing the NCAA, but Clemson becomes the latest school to take somebody to court. And Clemson is suing uh, the ACC. I don't know how many of you saw this yesterday, but in a filing in the Court of Common Pleas in Pickens County, South Carolina, Clemson calls into question both the ACC's grant of rights and exit fees calling the withdrawal penalty unconscionable and unenforceable. So Clemson is asking in the suit for a declaration that the ACC would not own the rights to Clemson's games, quote, after Clemson ceases to be a member of the ACC. So Clemson wants the ACC exit fee, which is three times the ACC operating budget, (laughs) an estimated $140 million, ruled as, quote, an unenforceable penalty in violation of public policy. So Florida State filed in late December, and now after revenue and new college football playoff television agreements are out, which has the ACC getting substantially less money than SEC and Big Ten schools, Clemson says, let me go ahead and figure out where the closest exit is. Kind of like when you always sit with your, uh, your family somewhere and you always have to face the door. (laughs) <laughs> to recognize where you can get out. It's essentially what Clemson and FSU are doing. Mm-hmm. They are, and they're smart. Mm-hmm. The, the amount of money that they're losing right now from being in the ACC, Bleeding. yeah, it, it makes all the sense in the world. $21 million, to be exact, per Jeez. year. So annually, each SEC and Big Ten team will earn more than $21 million under the new agreement, which starts in 2026. ACC teams will earn $13 million. So that is an $8 million difference a season. What's crazy about the ACC is they also have had championships come through, I think, more than the Big Ten in the last, like, 10 years, or if we're discussing the it. ACC? Yeah. Not like, in football. Not in football? Well, in the last yeah. 10 years. Last 10, yeah. You've Clemson. got Michigan, Ohio State, and then you've got a couple for Clemson. So it's the same. It's about the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah about the same. Yeah. The prestige, though, of either um, – I'll, I'll say the ACC has taken more of a hit. Uh, yeah. And you've got uh, – a. Well, yes, Florida State, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. If you're counting, though, new Big Ten teams, that's where our new Big Ten slash, you know, SEC teams, that's where things get a little trickier yeah. in terms of just teams that have made the playoff. Yeah. Um, but the difference in a whole between payouts for conference television revenue and now playoff television revenue, $51 million difference per school. That's nuts, dude. Crazy. Uh, if I was Clemson and I've been carrying the water for the ACC, I'd be looking at this too. The real question mm-hmm. they're going to have to ask themselves is how long are they willing to battle with the ACC? And I even saw, of course, where uh, Florida in Florida against the ACC, they're, um, they're, just, they're, they're, they're trying to figure out what court and county they're going to have the cases at. Like yeah. it matters. Yeah. It's skewed. Like, and both sides is trying to win because nobody wants to see themselves dissolved as a conference. And right now, they're closer to being dissolved with these lawsuits than they ever have been. Yeah, I watched this happen with the unfolding of the Pac-12, and it starts like this. This is how it it starts. It it starts like this, and then in two years, boom, it's gone. 615-737-1045. Our number is streaming live on 104.5 The Zone TV. Coming up, a stat that is not exactly encouraging to... Aaron Rodgers 
the previous Packers quarterback, but his new team got him another first-round wide receiver, something his older uh, employer did not do. Details next. <laughs> Hey, it's Kayla Anderson with Members Nutrition. You've heard me talk about the Youthful Cleanse by Daily Defense, but Members Nutrition brings affordable and quality supplements to you at a fraction of the normal retail cost. And we all know right now, it's always expensive when it comes to that. And yes, these are products made right here in the USA. No matter what type of supplement that you are in the market for, maybe it is a immunity supplement, which we'd all love this time of year, weight loss, detox, like I talked about with the cleanse, men's health, women's health, relaxation, whatever you need in terms of a supplement, they have it all. And now they are proud to announce that their supplements um, are being given out at an even better price to our listeners. They're offering an extra 50% off your purchase on the already discounted prices. Um, I've said this before. I take a couple of their supplements, including the probiotic, which is great for gut health. And so go ahead and give your body a chance to feel good again. No code needed on this. The discount is automatically applied at checkout. So go now to membersnutrition.com. If you want an engagement ring that she'll be proud of, there's only one place to go, and that's Genesis Diamonds. Genesis has cornered the market on all world-class designers. These these New York and Los Angeles-based designers are the best of the best. Every store wants them, but very few stores make the cut. Genesis, though, they made the cut and has all the luxury brands, all the ones women are asking for, so don't settle. Get her the ring of her dream at Genesis, and don't think you'll pay more. Genesis has complete ready to wear designer rings as low as $1,900. And of course, no jeweler can beat the price of Genesis Diamonds. Whether you want natural diamonds or lab-grown diamonds, Genesis has the guaranteed best price and highest quality. And Genesis gives you a 120% diamond upgrade guarantee plus free service for life. All this with no commission salespeople. No pressure ever is what that means. Nobody delivers for you like Genesis when it comes to quality, value, selection, warranties, or customer care. Get the deal you deserve on your diamond, Genesis Diamonds. And now with the expanded selection of luxury pre-owned Rolex watches, all the hard-to-find models, too. Check them out. Genesis Diamonds, located in Green Hills and Cool Springs.
Wednesday morning at RKW is brewed by Eighth and Roast, Ramon, Kayla, and Will as wide receivers continue to pick their new homes in free agency. Tweet this morning from Matt Downs. This was last night with a picture of the newest wide receiver for the New York Jets, Mike Williams from the Los Angeles Chargers, signing a one-year deal yesterday with New York. FanDuel Sportsbook tweeted, who's stopping this trio? And it was a picture of Aaron Rodgers, Garrett Wilson, and Mike Williams. And Matt Downs' tweet says, MetLife Stadium Field Turf. Boom. <laughs> love it. Will be what will stop that trio. I don't know if I love guys getting hurt. but No, but I think that's <laughs> hilarious because it's like last year, they just assumed because Aaron Rodgers was there that this was going to be a Super Bowl run and blah, 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 blah. And then they realized they had a crap Tola offensive line and it only took free four snaps in to get that man hurt. And he's not getting any younger. And I know that Aaron Rodgers is done some great stuff, has done some great stuff in the past. That does not mean that he's going to be able to do what he did back then now and stay healthy. That's still to be determined, too. Yeah, this is just banking on the past. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. That turf, though, has it has ended a few careers. One of my former teammates tore his knee up on that turf. I'm talking about the same simple step, the same way Aaron Rodgers did, and boom, he was done. He hasn't played since, man. They got to figure something out when it comes to MetLife turf. It's weird. Uh, I don't know what it is. But uh, when it comes down to that type of stuff, of them, it's, they're winning the offseason. The Jets have become the new Browns. <laughs> That's the way I'm putting they it. They also need their coaching staff to do the job. Well, of course, that plays a part in it too, but they're they're banking on Aaron Rodgers being yeah. that that offensive um just genius that they think he is. Savior. Uh, he he better do something. They they have paid out a lot of money, made a lot of changes, crapped on a lot of people. One of those people is Zach Wilson, of course. And he's still the backup. So it's not like if he does go down, what, you're going to throw the ball to him again and see how that goes? Good luck. That is why they've invested so much in an offensive line that has a couple of former Baltimore Ravens on it. You've got Tyron Smith now at left tackle. I think the Jets have had a good offseason. I think a a really good offseason. When you look at Tyron Smith at left tackle and Morgan Moses at right tackle, those guys aren't young, but you need immediate protection and not young linemen learning how to be pros on the job for Aaron Rodgers right now. You had the other Raven, John Simpson, the former fourth-round pick at a Clemson at left guard. You've got their second-round pick going into his second season in Joe Tipman at a Wisconsin at center who started last season. And then Elijah Vera Tucker, who they have slotted in at right guard for this next year. If that offensive line is good, the Jets are going to be good. The players are there on that team. And the defense is mm-hmm. uh, well-documented how, how solid that is. So at this point, you have Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams, Xavier Gibson in the slot with Alan Lazard as your number four wide receiver making $11 million a year. I'm calling cap on on all that, Will. I'm going to be real. (laughs) I am believing in the New York Jets. I can't believe I'm saying it, but that offensive line is good. It is. It is is objectively a good offensive line. Good and fragile. Sure. Good. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Good and good and fragile. Like they're they're like. If one guy, one of those guys goes down, you're in a pickle mm-hmm. a little you, bit. I'm talking. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. We can live. And but, then, I mean, on on the surface, that is a good five blocking for Aaron Rodgers. Simpson has got some issues though. He got some major issues when it comes down to his level of play and how he goes about it too. Bert, they, y'all y'all pretty much booted him out of Baltimore, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then of Tyron, can he play an entire season? Mm-hmm. And then when it comes down to Morgan Moses, I like big, big Morgan, of course. Uh, but what's his level of good that we're asking for? Veteran, yes. But I'm I'm calling I'm side eyeing the heck out of them. And I just, I, I don't think they do that well this year. I don't. Again, I just want to see in for one time with not a lot of like boasting up of the Jets or wherever Aaron Rodgers is going into the season, like. Let's just see what they do without all the extra hoopla that comes around with oh, that's it. Because be part of it. and and that's the thing. Like he's coming off of the Achilles injury, right? Where he put up this whole campaign of he was gonna try to make it back at the end of the year, and that was not true because he was out there, but we didn't really see much and he didn't obviously play. I really want to see like who is the Aaron Rodgers now? Who is that Aaron Rodgers at whatever age he is? Thirty something? 
upper 30s, right? Pushing 40. 40. Yeah. I, I'm 40 interested. Years old. Yeah, I want to see who that Aaron Rodgers is now. I, I do. Well, he's going to have his hands full, that's for sure. There's a lot of pressure in New York. Mike Williams, uh, one of the best contested catchers, uh, according to Next Gen Stats in the NFL. Chargers cut him after seven seasons because his cap charge this year was going to be $32.5 million. Mm. Had 1,100 yards in 2021, nine touchdowns. What sucks for him is going from one highly taxed place to another highly taxed place. <laughs> sea to shining sea for Mike Williams. 615-737-1045. Coming up, we watch Virginia basketball so you don't have to. And five, or excuse me, four big pro days are happening today. Who are you most interested to follow from Tuscaloosa, Columbus, Austin, and Los Angeles this afternoon? We'll talk about that next. What's going on? It's Will Bowling. Do you or someone close to you find it maddening to hear conversation when there's background noise? Maybe it's while you're dining at your favorite restaurant. You're in a crowded arena. Maybe it's been a gym watching high school basketball recently. You can't hear the person talking to people down from you. Outside of the baseball field, look, there's pinging of bats on baseballs. You, you can't hear the person two lawn chairs down, maybe the way you used to be able to. Well, if I'm describing you or someone in your family, I want to introduce you to Brentwood Hearing Center. They've got five doctors of audiology, state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment, and the most recent hearing device technology on the market. Their goal is to get you off the sidelines and back of the game a better hearing. They've got 85 years of experience from their convenient location right off I-65 in Brentwood, and they will tailor a hearing solution to each individual patient. Give them a call today, 615-377-0420, or visit them online at BrentwoodHearingCenter.com. That's 615-377-0420. Let the madness be on the hardwood this month and call Brentwood Hearing Center. That's Brentwood Hearing Center. Better hearing, better life.
7 o'clock. Good morning from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I am Robert Walsh, and the madness has begun. The two first four games that started last night, we got two more tonight. Wagner taking down Howard, 71-68. Virginia losing by 20 in one of the most uh, disappointing offensive showings in NCAA March Madness history, losing 62-42 to Colorado State. Titans making a nice addition to the defensive line in signing Sebastian Joseph Day yesterday, played in 14 games for the Chargers, two for the 49ers, grabbing three sacks and three tackles for a loss. His experience along the entire defensive line will be very valuable for defensive line coach Tracy Rocker. And the Titans aren't done with veteran additions, bringing in former Bills cornerback Tredavious White for a visit. White was injured in week four against the Dolphins last year and only tallied 12 tackles and one interception. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Seven a.m. in Nashville as hour two begins of Ramon, Kayla, and Will. RKW is always brewed by Eighth and Roast Coffee with locations on Eighth Avenue, Charlotte, the airport, or the Broadview at Vanderbilt. Eighth and Roast Coffee cultivates community by the cup, and you can find your favorite retail bag at every local Kroger and Whole Foods as well. Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Robert Walsh producing the show. I'm Will Bowling. We've got pro days going on today at Alabama, Ohio State, Texas, and USC. We had some semblance of college basketball last night as Virginia looks exactly like the team that had no business playing in the NCAA tournament, and we can talk about that. And games coming up tonight and this weekend with Jerry Palm of CBS Sports, who joins us in 15 minutes. Guys from Tuscaloosa, Columbus, Austin and L.A., Bama, Ohio State, Texas, and USC Pro Days. Who are you most interested to watch today? Uh, J.C. Latham. Mm. I don't think he did much at the combine. I kind of want to see how he moves, what his workout, what's said uh, about him after uh, the workout. He's a guy who's teetering. I mean, he's mid-first round as it as it's concerned with tackles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I want to see how he operates in his pro day, man. Um, that's where I am as far as that goes. And also, of course, it's easy to say, okay, does Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. work out? That's, and that's what I was going to say because we did not see anything from him. He did not do anything at the Combine. Um, he will be involved in today's pro day, which will be a – spectacle up there in Ohio. You'll see almost every scout, every, you know, coach, GM um, will be up there in, in Columbus today. I'm just interested to see, like, what he does, how much he does up there, just because he's been so low-key. And now, I think it's interesting, you guys, because Will mentioned earlier on in the show, there could be a possibility, now, probably not going to be the highest possibility, but there could be a one, two, three, four quarterback draft which is very rare. We've seen one, two, three, but there is a possibility we could see Marv not go in the top four. So I'll be interested to see what he does specifically today. I would have liked to have seen Kool-Aid McKinstry, but he has now suffered that injury. So I don't think we're going to see him at Pro Day at Alabama. No. I'm going to say Tavondre Sweat, Texas. Okay. As the Titans continue with such a thin defensive line, I am becoming more and more intrigued with the just freak of a human that this guy is. And I say that with the utmost respect at as big as he is 366 pounds running a five, two, seven 40 yard dash at the NFL combine. I am very, very interested in his ability as a prospect to just be a mountain of a human yet be as athletic as he is. And I'm starting to love him at pick number 38 for the Tennessee Titans. 
And on top of that, though, too, he's 366 in his way in. I wonder will, where, how much more has he lost. If he if he touches 350 anything, I think that shows that he's working, he's willing mm-hmm. to work, and willing to shrink in size, too, because that conditioning is going to matter. I mean, we know that to be the case, too, especially if he touts himself as a um, as as a three down player, that'd be huge for a dude like him. I I still think he's a second rounder. Somebody might try to get him at the late first, but he's a second, middle of the second type of guy. So he'll be on the board for sure. Yeah. You, so you think he's a realistic option at thirty eight? I do. Mm-hmm. I do legitimately think that. So um, if you did that, you would probably skip over the wide receiver, obviously, and maybe find one what in the fourth round if you want to do that. I, I think there's strong talent as mm-hmm. far as the wide receivers go. There is, um, and and if you the more quarterbacks get pushed up, the more talent get pushed back also. And then you got to think about this too. We've been speaking mostly about um, offensive players and stuff like that. Like there are some defensive players that are probably going to slide back and and will be of quality concern for you. Like there's still corners to be picked up. There's still D linemen, edge guys that nobody's really talking about because everybody's going mostly O. Uh, some news from Albert Breer six seconds ago. Uh, Monday morning quarterback, senior NFL reporter says Marvin Harrison Jr. will not be working out for scouts today. Well, there we go. So he's just saying, nope. Wow. Said, uh, we'll be relatively quiet in Columbus with so many high-end draft (laughs) prospects choosing to stay in school. No GMs or head coach. Our coaches are scheduled to be in Columbus today. Wow. That's... A little no GMs. No GMs or head coaches are scheduled to be in Columbus today. That they might will be all a be first. in either Tuscaloosa, Austin, or L.A. And Ryan Poles is scheduled to be watching his future quarterback, you Caleb Sam. Williams. That sucks. Not, uh, not going to be a big day up there. Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, and for some of these other guys that just want to get in front of some of those big names, right? Not a normal Ohio State draft class no. this time around. No, it's not. Um, I don't know. That's weird to me. Uh, but you... He knows he's a guy. He's going top five. Has to go top five. Um, and if he doesn't, you're getting a steal. I'm gonna be real. I, I don't. I don't like that. I don't. Marvin Harrison Jr. That's, not working out, and not even yeah. at all. Yeah. I'm and I, I'm a person that, that that says all you do what you want when you have that type of power. I 100 percent firmly believe in that. But I'm also a person that says the the, the group eats also. And if he's a guy that trusts his quarterback on pro day to throw to him, and you got other linemen there, you got D linemen there, um, then they come to see Mar- you work out. Mm-hmm. Because of that, you get nothing. But, again, information's at every stop point when it comes down to those scouts having it, being able to send it out and say, hey, we like this D tackle. They got some edge rushers. They got some players there. Sure. It's just not Mar- Marvin Harrison Jr. And, and my thing is this. When you have a player like him that decides to take this leap of faith and say, man, look, why would I work out for y'all? One, that's awesome. But what you also have is a bunch of dudes falling behind him uh, who who want to do this same stuff. And not everybody's capable of doing what you are doing, Marvin Harrison Jr. I think it sets up a, a lot of differences moving forward with how the combine and pro days will be evaluated and also being asked of guys to do. I think you get it somewhat of an incomplete offseason if you don't do some of these things. But – his tape is his tape. If you're asking me if I'm picking in the top five, do I want a Marvin Harrison Jr.? The answer is yes. But do you have character issues that pop up after the fact? Probably not because his dad is mentoring. Yeah, and he's he, he's had never had any of those issues up at Ohio State either. But I think I'm with you on the every like the eats part. Everybody eats because that is true. Like if you're if you're performing at pro day, if you're there and they know that you're the star, like you're going to get extra guys up there in terms of head coaches and things like that. Like, you can't rely on him. I get that. Right. But it, it is one of those things where I, I wish I could see it, but I get it. He's I mean, far. on a day where you've got three other yeah. powerhouse programs doing pro days as well, I, I don't know if Marvin Harrison Jr. working out brings any GM or head coach there just to see him. Yeah, Alabama. Not when you've got Bama, Texas, and USC going on at the same time. That's true. Mm-hmm. 615-737-1045, how you jump in? Last night, Colorado State dispatches Virginia from the NCAA tournament, 67-42. to 42. Mm. And it included one of the most disrespectful scorebug graphics that I have ever seen in my life. Did you guys watch this game last night? Yes. I saw a little bit of it. So at one point, Virginia went almost an hour of world time. 
not scoring. And they scored their first points the second half. They did not score in the last nine plus minutes of the first half. And CBS, and I know it's true TV, but the true TV broadcast put up a graphic that said first basket since 948 p.m. Eastern time. Hmm. At this point, it was 1040 p.m. Eastern time. Wow. It was one of the worst basketball games I have ever seen. You and it. at one point, yeah. Tennessee played a game against Georgetown where both teams finished in the 30s under Conzo Martin. It right. was that bad. 14 points in the first half by Virginia. And this should not be a surprise. We talked about it. You know that they play a defensive style. But I was even surprised uh, that they got to this point in terms of being a maybe March Madness team. Yeah. Clearly that it was not the case. I mean, 25% from the field? 25% and you're a college basketball team in the ACC who's won a championship back in 2019? Yeah. And been pretty, like, at least consistent at making the postseason. Now, you haven't gone far as of late, but that is a pathetic showing. It was. I, I saw it. it. It looked like it looked like some people that deserve to be playing into the tournament. That's essentially, like, that's exactly what it looked like to me. Uh, where's the level of athlete when you're an ACC type of school like that? That's what's most bothersome. I mean, to Caleb's point, they just won it in 19. Mm -hmm. You should still have some some reserve if gas. Tony's a good coach. Yeah, you should still have some reserve gas from that championship right there. Like, look at what UConn has done as of late, too. Still, like, good programs stay good. And for them to look that bad, goodness, they missed the mark on recruiting. Mm. Or NIL, whichever one it is. Well, they got a good degree. Yeah. Uh, Smart school. Uh, they, they, they are a hard-nosed defensive, drag you in the mud, slow it down, half-court offense, or defense. And then when they don't score points on the other end to pair with that defense, then there's just not going to be points at all. <laughs> They're not. Dude, this is uh, real quick, just to segue back. This still has been throwing me off about the Ohio State Pro Day. Is this also why Ryan Day's job is on the line to the amount of court? I mean, quality player they got up there to not be able to garner any GM head coach to the Pro Day. So. You I, don't I think, think so? Uh, there's just more important Pro Days going on elsewhere in the same day. More important. Ohio State is always important. Yeah, that's the point. It's you know a valid saying? question, a but I don't think it's why his job is in jeopardy up there. I mean, they're still beating. Every single Big Ten team not named Michigan. And, and that's the point. That's all it is. Well, now that's they the don't point. have Harbaugh. Like, if they don't win this year, that game, woo, he gone. Me Ohio State, if they he don't win the national championship. They <laughs> might be the number one team preseason this year, Ohio yes. State, to with the talent easily. they have that they brought in through the portal. Yep, ton of additions. Uh, did you see yesterday, uh, Ryan Day said that the Alabama Center, who has transferred now to Ohio State, <laughs> Didn't have snap issues. Said it was a Jalen Milrow issue with his cadence. Really? Love I didn't this. see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Said it was a Jalen Milrow issue with his cadence. All love right. This. So we're not blaming the big guy anymore. Love this. No, I just love the fact that they, that they can hate in public like this. <laughs> Absolutely. friggin' Lulu. They're like, he's going to be the guy. Well, I'm sure. If it was that, then we'll see. Coming up next, Jerry Palm of CBS Sports will join us. Which region is the toughest in March Madness, and how good of a draw did Tennessee get as the two seed in the Midwest? Jerry Palm of CBS answers that and more coming up next. Hey, you've heard me talk about how Lee Company is all you need for your home. Did you know they're also all you need for your facility? Well, you do now. That's right. They're expert technicians with Lee Company on the facilities team. They have you covered not just for HVAC, but for plumbing and electrical, too. From healthcare facilities to industrial, everything in between, no matter what your business does, Lee Company is available 24-7, 365 to keep your building running efficiently. And I love that, right? 24-7, 365. I think we all know that when there are issues in our building, the AC's out, the heating's not working the way it should, when there's a random cold blast in the middle of March in Middle Tennessee, you need someone who is there on your team ready to help at a moment's notice, 24-7, 365. So remember this phone number, 615-567-1000 or online at League Company. Dot com. That's where you go to put the best experts on your team, on the facilities team. They've got you covered not just for HVAC, plumbing, 
and electrical as well. 615-567-1000 or online at leadcompany.com. That's Lead Company, all you need. If you're thinking about purchasing a new Ford truck, the time is now at Two Rivers Ford because it's truck month, y'all. Dave got financing rates as low as 1.9%, no payments for 90 days, and bonus cash offer, all right? And this is all on top of Two Rivers Ford low prices because they always sell below MSRP. In fact, way below MSRP. But the best part about truck month is there is no pressure because Two Rivers Ford has non-commissioned sales team, all right? And if you're just interested in test driving, not ready to make a purchase guess what it's not a problem you can even call them and schedule a test at your house whatever makes it easiest for you there's a reason tours for has been a landmark local business in our community for over 40 years and a reason they're one of the top four dealers in the nation yes not just tennessee the nation two rivers Ford, the south's most trusted ford dealer
Wednesday morning, on Ramon, Kayla, and Will. RKW is brewed by 8th and Roast with our NFL veteran, Ramon Foster. Hey, hey. And Kayla Anderson, I'm Will Bowling. March Madness very much here with half of the first four down and two more games coming up tonight before the full party begins tomorrow. And discussing that with us right now, writing for CBS Sports, he is Jerry Palm. Good morning, Jerry. How are you? All right. How are you? Good. I, I know, Jerry, it is common when bad things happen in the world to mark yourself safe on social media. Uh, have you marked yourself safe yet from watching Virginia basketball play in the first four last night? <laughs> no, but I, I can't say that I'm surprised that that's what happened because that team didn't belong in the tournament. Um, and I'm a firm believer that you don't judge the committee based on how teams perform once they get in the tournament. But this is something that, I mean, I guess we didn't know they'd be that bad, but um, this they were not a tournament team and demonstrated it again last night. It is sad too, Jerry, that we're watching Robbie Avila highlights last night on Twitter and Indiana state and how fun that team was. Were they the team that should feel most disrespected for not getting that spot that Virginia got? Well, I, I mean, I'm sure they, anybody, anybody probably would. Um, I actually thought St. John's should have gotten it, but it, it was hard to make a case for Indiana State based on the committee's normal criteria. But I'm an Indiana guy, so I was, I was hoping they would find their way in, um, and that or that I'd be wrong about them. But it, it just, they're just once you had five bid stealers, it was going to be really hard for Indiana State to get in. Jerry Palm of CBS Sports at JP Palm CBS, where you can follow his work on Twitter. So, Jerry, as you look across all four regions, we'll talk some Tennessee hoops and uh, discuss some of these local teams. But when you look at the bracket as uh, a whole, which region is the toughest? I think UConn's. Um, they didn't really do them very many favors. They gave them, they gave them a number two seed that should have been a one. <laughs> and the committee made them eighth overall. So they were barely even a two, um, but they really should have been the fourth number one. That's Iowa state. Um, Illinois is a terrific team as a three. They won the big 10 tournament. In fact, the top four seeds in this region all won their conference tournaments, but UConn's the only one to win the regular season. Auburn is an explosive offensive team uh, and always dangerous. So yeah, I, I would say that UConn um, probably has the toughest road. Uh, when it comes down to upsets and teams that can make a run for you, the one that keeps coming up, I hear out of everybody's mouth, is McNeese State, the, a team that's led by Will Wade. They went 30-3 and three on the year. Is that scheduling, or do you got to say to yourself, they are a legit, legitimate team that can upset teams and make a run throughout this tournament? It's probably both, scheduling and they're a legit team that could make a run in this tournament. Uh, and they got a good draw. I mean, the draw is important, too. Uh, they got Gonzaga, which is a five seed that shouldn't be any higher than a seven or an eight. Um, and then they get Kansas, which is going to be missing their uh, leading scorer or uh, the team that, that Kansas plays, which is, um, I think, Samford. Uh, and then they could, you know, you could have a battle of double digit seeds. So, yeah, that McNeese got a really good draw that gives them an opportunity to maybe even go to the Sweet 16. And then, um, I also like Grand Canyon and James Madison. Uh, and those are teams that beat, you know, good teams that are in this tournament uh, in the regular season. James Madison won at Michigan State to start the season. Grand Canyon beat San Diego State in the regular season. Uh, so, you know, those are teams that already know that they can win games like this. J Jerry Palmer, CBS Sports with us this morning talking March Madness. And, and, and football is one of those things where you say, well, coaching matters. You know, you can set the, the, the culture, the tempo and stuff like that. And March Madness is super unique, which is, I guess, why the, it's, it's madness, right? And in that, you don't know each other's team. You play one game. You lose your out. How much does coaching and experience matter in March Madness when it comes down to this tournament play? Because – as you said, a McNeese State, you look at the name and you say to yourself, oh, we'll beat them. That's what you're supposed to say, right? But how much yeah. does coaching and experience matters for this time of the year? I don't think it's nothing. Um, you know, I, th I think it's probably overrated. But, um, you know, the coaches, a lot of the coaching gets done, you know, leading into the tournament. You know, you're coaching these guys all season long. And now it's a matter of, you know, having good scout and um, – 
you know, but the players are the ones that are really going to decide the game. You know, the players are the ones that are going to make or miss their shots. The coaches can get them in position, but the players have to execute. And uh, so it's really a, a player's, I think it's a player's tournament. Uh, coaching is not unimportant, though. Jerry Palm with CBS Sports joining us this morning on RK Dub. So the SEC getting eight teams into March Madness, really competitive conference this year. Mm -hmm. Who do you see as the favorite in terms of just even out of the SEC here to make a deep run? Hmm. Um, I actually picked Alabama to the Elite Eight, but I think Tennessee is good enough to win the whole thing. They're probably the best chance to win the whole thing. Um they're going to have to go through <laughs> that region the, the produce the number one seed in that region. That that committee put this together like they're trying to replay the Maui Invitational. Um, they've got, you know, Purdue and Tennessee played each other in that tournament. Gonzaga and Kansas were both in the Maui Invitational. Um, so Purdue could, Purdue could play uh, two teams that they beat in the Maui Invitational to try and get to the Final Four. Um, and, then, of course, Tennessee's in that spot, too. Creighton's a good team. Um, it's uh, it's a pretty good regional, but I, Tennessee, because of, in particular because of Dalton Connect, and when you have a guy like that, that's somebody that you can ride deep into a tournament. Um, obviously, they're going to depend heavily on him uh, to perform well. He can't have a game like he had the, in the game that lost Tennessee lost in the SEC tournament. But if he plays well. Uh, then Tennessee's got a chance to go a long way in this thing. Yeah, I know. I was just looking at my bracket that I just put together, and, and I'm looking at Tennessee-Purdue matchup, and you were joking about the Maui Invitational rematch, but it, it's true if you look at that side. When it comes to Dalton Connect, that's obviously a difference maker, right, in this tournament for oh, Rick sure. Barnes. Um, you also have to look at Zakai Ziegler being back because he was not here as a guard last year as he was dealing with an injury. Right. How much of a benefit yeah, can he be too, Jerry? Well, yeah, I mean that's that's a really good backcourt. You know, that's uh, that could that's probably the top backcourt in this region. So, you know, and, and a lot of people say that you know guards are the most important thing in this tournament. Um, you know, Purdue's got uh, honorable mention All American point guard in in Braden Smith, and that's one of the reasons why Purdue is so much better this year. It's because of the jump that he made from last year to this year, and of course, the National Player of the Year. And Zach Eady, who's not a guard but can't be defended by pretty much anyone in this tournament. So um, if they get back together again, uh, I don't think Dalton Connect was at the playing at the level that he eventually reached when they met in the Maui Invitational. Uh, so I think that would be a really interesting matchup. Uh, you know, two All-American players, uh, superstars in college basketball with Dalton Connect and, and Zach Eady. Jerry Palm of CBS Sports, our guest this morning here on Ramon, Kayla, and Will. Jerry, when you talk about a Rick Barnes team in March, a lot of Tennessee fans just shuddered as I said that. And for whatever reason, his teams have not gotten over the hump outside of a Kevin Durant Texas team. Why do you think Rick Barnes specifically has not had better luck in the month of March? And how much do you buy into that being a, a him problem or just simply that bad luck? Yeah, there's a yeah, there's a little bit of luck. It, you know, Matt Painter is in this region too, and it, it, a lot of the same things have been said about him. It's you know the NCAA tournament is um, you know it's a one and done thing. It, the regular season, you can have a bad day. You can't have a bad day in the NCAA tournament. You know, Purdue did last year, uh, one that'll probably be shown on highlights forever. Um, you know, Tennessee has had some rough times in this tournament, and one Coach Barnes has too, but. You know, it's, this is a hard thing to win. You can be a great coach. The Hall of Fame coach would never win this tournament just because that's the way things go. And uh, so I don't know. It's not like Rick Barnes can't coach. He's a good coach. So, um, But just hasn't had had the ultimate success in this sport yet. Jerry, it's interesting when you watch this Kentucky team. I was in the building for their win in Knoxville a couple of weeks ago. And when they decide to play defense – it feels like they could beat anybody in college basketball. And then when they don't decide to play defense, which is often they could lose to anybody in college basketball. How do you evaluate this team in that region specifically with Marquette and Houston? Yeah, that's yeah. That is, I mean, they, Kentucky could win the whole thing or they could get bounced in my like first or second round. And it's, and it's going to be defense that gets them bounced. They're one to 10 talent. They're the best. They're the most talented team in this tournament. Talent is never the problem at Kentucky. 
and that's true again this year. But, yeah, the, the defense just doesn't seem to interest them much. And in this tournament, that's going to bite you. You're At some point, you get past, you know, the first round, maybe the second round. You better start playing defense every round or you're going to lose. The, these teams are too good to not play defense. With that talent right there, you, there's always a a, a, a a March Madness darling, whether it's Carmelo Anthony or somebody. You mentioned Kentucky with all the talent that they have, and Reed Shepard's shown that he can be a guy. Yep. Is there anybody on any team that you say, if if this team gets hot, this guy is going to shine? Yeah, oh, gosh. Um, so you're you're talking about, you know, guys that are not on, on these top seats that are already really, you know, really good teams. Um I'm going to go with Terrence Shannon at Illinois. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's um, he's electric. That is one of the fastest guys in college basketball with a ball in his hands. Um, he's really hard to stop. He put up, I think, 40 in the Big Ten championship game. And he, he can carry that Illinois team a long way. And they've got really good pieces around him. So, you know, that's. That's a really dangerous team, but Terrence Shannon Jr. is is a guy that can can put a team on his back and go a long way. In that same sense, there are coaching personalities too, and and I saw for myself uh, last week Kentucky travels. Kentucky wants to win big. At, at some point, does Cal continues to stay at Kentucky? Do they move on from Kentucky if, if from him if he has an early exit because he gets the players. He gets the excitement, but does it have to correlate to a national championship run for him? Mm, well, at some point, I mean, it's not like he hasn't won there. It just hasn't been lately. I mean, it's not, it's not like Coach Cal is unfamiliar with winning national championships. It, um, I, I don't expect them to move on from him, and I think this will be his last coaching job. So if he's uh, – um, I expect him to retire from Kentucky, not get fired from Kentucky. Yeah. We were just talking about Illinois, and you had spoken earlier about UConn maybe having the toughest draw on that side of the bracket. There are some really dominant ones in this tournament. We saw UConn win it all last year, but we also saw some craziness happen in terms of who got to the Final Four. Are they dominant enough to win it all this year, Jerry? Well, they certainly can. Um, We had three teams dominate college basketball this year, UConn, Houston, and Purdue. Yep. And they were so dominant that February 17th, the committee gave us their top 16 at that time, and those were the top three teams, and number four was Arizona. A week later, it had gotten to the point where those three teams could have each lost twice from that point on and still been the top three teams in the bracket. So that, that's how far ahead of college basketball they were. And any of those teams are, to me, they're kind of co-favorites. Uh, you know, UConn has been a little bit hotter at the end of the year, but UConn, Houston, Purdue, if I were a better, which I'm not, I would take those three and give you the field. And I think the champion comes from one of those three. He is Jerry Palm covering college hoops for CBS at JP Palm CBS, where you can follow his work on Twitter. Jerry, appreciate the time. Thanks so much. All right, thanks for having me on. Thanks, nice. Jerry. Absolutely. There's Jerry Palm with us this morning discussing March Madness and uh, – I think making a point that is making a lot of our brackets pretty boring. The fact that the top three teams are very separated from the other 65, or I guess 66 that are still playing at this point. I don't know if you guys filled out your brackets yet. Um, Mm -hmm. By the way, join our Bracketology. We've put out the link. It's on Twitter. We'd love to see you in the competition. But when I originally did it, because I do play with it a little bit before I I solidify it. it. And I had, I'm not joking, guys, I had four number one seeds, and I said, nope, can't do this. Yeah. And then I had to shake it up. I'm like, this is not happening. But at first glance, at first moving through the bracket, it was very easy for me to do that. So kind of to that point, uh, that never happens, though, usually, so... Here here in the Illinois uh, conversation right there, and they've been hot. They were hot, feel like... November, December. Then it got cold for a while. He dropped a couple games and stuff like that. But that was that is a solid squad. Hearing him say what he said about their uh their their soon to be I guess uh March Madness darling is going to be fascinating. It's always a guy. It's always a guy in it that that really takes over March Madness. So we'll see. 
We just put out the link again at Ramon Kayla Will on Twitter if you want to go there and join the RKW Bracket Challenge. Yes. How many groups are y'all in total? Just two right now. Just Three. Two. Yeah. I'm I, in five I just so far. Joined <laughs> ours. Uh, it's easy. Go to our, our, our Twitter handle and um, click the link and then invite yourself in. Some friendly competition, right? Yeah. I just joined it too, by the way. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. I did mine last night. I do not allow myself to do multiple brackets, but I will allow myself to do multiple groups for sure. Yeah. Multiple groups. Why okay. not? For sure. Yeah. I love that life, man. This is exciting. I'll never forget my 10th grade teacher, uh, biology, wanted me to help her, her with her bracket. I only had one right. This is old three, no, 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 2002, I'm guessing. That's when Duke won it. As when Jay Williams was there in that year. It was the only oh, one I wow. got right. I was so wrong. <laughs> Anyone so who... Wrong. Uh, went to my high school and knows the name Miss Tripp in seventh grade English, knows that she would turn on the tournament on the projector in English wow. every single year for one of the windows of March Madness. So if you had Miss Tripp after 11 a.m. here in Nashville at my high school or a middle school at that point, but went to the same middle school in high school, then you knew you were watching games. It was the best. I mean, there was nothing cooler awesome. in school than getting a teacher that would allow you to watch live television and had no strings attached. It was not like, all right, if we do we our work, like <laughs> it would just be like, a, no, like y'all just come back from spring break or you're about to go on spring break. Either way, you're not getting any work done in the week before or after spring break. Mm-hmm. So let's just take a day. Let's take like 45 minutes because we had block scheduling. So we had hour and a half classes. And let's just watch some college basketball. It was so much fun. You ready for my dad joke? Yeah, let me hear it. She wasn't tripping. She wasn't tripping. Coming up next, we're going to talk some (laughs) Nashville Predators hockey. The Preds not only get in the end zone last night, but they get the two-point conversion. And they set a little bit of history. A little bit of uh, Mm. a record last night, tying a pretty good team. We'll talk about that next. If you want an engagement ring that she will be proud to wear, there's only one place to go, y'all. That's Genesis Diamonds. Genesis has cornered the market on all the world-class designers. These New York and Los Angeles-based designers are the best of the best. Every store every store wants them, but few stores make the cut. Genesis made the cut and has all the luxury brands, all the ones women are asking for. So don't settle, okay? Get her the ring of her dreams at Genesis, and don't think you will pay more. No, no, no. Genesis has complete ready-to-wear designer rings as low as $1,900. And of course, no jeweler can beat the price of Genesis diamonds. Whether you want a natural diamond or a lab-grown diamond, Genesis has the guaranteed best price and highest quality. And only Genesis gives you a 120% diamond upgrade guarantee plus free service for life. All this with no commission salespeople, which means no pressure ever. Nobody delivers for you like Genesis does. And when it comes to quality, value, selection, warranties, or customer care, get the deal you deserve on your diamond, Genesis Diamonds. And now with an expanded selection of luxury pre-owned Rolex watches, all the hard-to-find models, check them out at Genesis Diamonds. They're located in Green Hills and Cool Springs. Mortgage professionals in Middle Tennessee. Hi, I'm Chuck McDowell, owner of Wesley Mortgage. I'm a true local, born in Mount Julia, met my wife at MTSU, and I live in Franklin. 
While every other mortgage company is cutting back, we're rapidly expanding and investing. Are you sick of feeling like an operations employee to ensure your loans are closed on time? When you look around your office, it doesn't look the same. You're missing people. You're missing your friends. Is anyone having fun? We're having fun every day. As the official mortgage provider of the Tennessee Titans, I've personally recruited the top local operations team to ensure your loans are closed on time. So you get paid. So you get to spend time building your business and you get to have fun at work again. Now is the time to join our team to start a confidential conversation with our local president and COO, visit ywesley.com, ywesley.com. The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all cash offer, you close in as little as 21 days, no home inspections, no lock boxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing.
Wednesday morning on Ramon, Kayla, and Will RKW is brewed by Eighth and Roasts. Coming up in 15 minutes, the Titans are reportedly hosting a Pro Bowl corner. You definitely know the name, but do you know how much he's been hurt recently? Oof. And do you know that he might be used for a little bit of leverage, perhaps, in a trade for another corner? Oh. We'll talk about that coming up at 8 o'clock. 615 1045. The Nashville Predators last night get into the end zone and they convert the two point conversion. <laughs> Eight to two. <laughs> you yeah. heard that a lot last night if Woo. you were at Bridgestone Arena. Not since the President's Trophy season of 2017 to 2018 have the Predators had points in 15 straight. And with last night's win over the lowly San Jose Sharks, 8-2, to two, they have points in 15 straight games. They are a legit contender Oof. for a Stanley Cup. Like I said, in hockey especially, th- the team that kind of rides the wave sometimes yeah. once they get in can certainly cause some havoc. And we've seen it time and time again with even last year, you know, the Boston Bruins so dominant throughout the regular season. We've seen President Cup winners that did include the Preds in the last, you know, 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily make it far. It, It just, it doesn't really matter what you do in the regular season as long as you start getting hot in the playoffs, like you can go a long way. So I think that's something to watch legitimately for this team right now that seems to be collectively just doing everything right. Let me read something. The last 14 games, their record, obviously 12-0-2 with those two games going into overtime and getting points for both. Goals per game, you guys, 4.07. They're scoring that many goals. Like this offense has literally exploded. Power play, Uh, 23.8 penalty kill 80.6 like these are really big numbers for a team that's doing this consistently um and now we've got about what 13 games left in the regular season and we'll mention it yesterday their schedule not not too tough yeah it's not crazy stretch right what's with, with what they're doing right now, have you seen this before, Kayla, and your coverage of them as far as like, all right, this is the run. This is what a run looks like for them. This, this takes me back to 2017, though, that era. Is this what it doing? Have you seen this before? So I got here right after that run, and I wasn't here again for for that postseason play, but that is very similar to – you know what they did once they got into the Stanley Cup playoffs is – they clearly like made a run like this. And when I've covered them past that time, um, I think it was more so on the opposite side. I think they expected this team to do more and they were kind of booted out earlier than, than they should have been in those two years after um, making that deep run. So this is something new for this team, at least that I've seen where it's like, okay, they're catching fire and this team Seems like they have all the pieces to to make a run because they've got UC Soros who's playing well. They've got Philip Forsberg who seems to be that guy. Finally, like we not we're not just saying Philip Forsberg is hot in February. Like uh, what we call Phil it, Brewery. Phil Brewery. Yep. Like he's been hot from start <laughs> to finish. What you're hoping at least, yeah. and then they've added these pieces this year with Ryan O'Reilly, like I've mentioned, um, Gus Nyquist. Gus Nyquist, it's been excellent, exactly. So yeah. that to me is a recipe for some upsets during the actual playoff. Gus Nyquist hit the 60 point mark with his assist on Philip Forsberg's goal last night. He is now joining a pretty good fraternity of players with 60 points in their first seasons with the team. Joining Paul Correa, J.P. Dumont, and Mike Ribeiro as the only other skaters in Preds history to reach the 60-point mark in their first seasons with the team. Yeah. It's not bad. Not bad at all. This reminds me a lot of that 2018, the President's Trophy team that obviously was the last one to have a uh, a 15-game point streak. The difference between this team and 2017 was that that team was awful in shootouts. Yep. And so their point totals were a bit skewed towards losing in a formula that you don't need in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So in 2017, that team dropped a lot of points because they couldn't win a shootout. But when you get the playoffs, there are no shootouts. So teams that were 
on the other end of things, very good in shootouts, looked better point-wise in the regular season, but that doesn't help you when push comes to shove at the end of the season. So that's yeah. why that 2017 team, you felt like underachieved a bit point total wise within the regular season. And then they stepped up and were a different squad in the postseason. So that that was why it, being around that team and um, working around here in 2017, that, that was the big talking point at the time. Mm-hmm. And then they went on a run and swept the Blackhawks. And Zach, all started Zach in, the, in the chat is saying, not sure we've ever seen a Pritt score like this. So offense yeah. sells. Yeah, incredible. Offense sells in every sport. Well, and, and two, like this team has always been built on really good goaltending and yes, really good defense. defense. Yep. That was kind of the, the MO for this team for so long. And I think that's why it took so long for, at the time, David Poyle to blow up the core. Because you, you had so much success during that run in 2017. And then you had some of those core guys. Remember P.K. Subban? Um, obviously, Roman Yossi is still here from the original core. But for so long, you thought that team could do it. But it just, the scoring wasn't happening. Yeah, they had uh, great defenders then. and This feels like a more balanced team, maybe. And they've yeah. had three injuries. They had three injuries to defensemen. And watching that game last night, it felt like a trap game until midway through the second period, trailing two to one, when then they go score seven goals um, unanswered. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make an inflammatory remark real quick. Go Man. for it. I still like the Winter Classic jerseys, by the way. Just one thought. Dude, that <laughs> right? Was that inflammatory? Those, yeah, it was. A lot of people so hated legit. them. I love oh, them. Oh, no, nobody about hated the, the Winter one. Classic. You mean the Stadium classic. Series? Stadium, stadium Series, series. Love them. yeah. Love them. Okay, okay, that makes more sense. I, oh, those, oh, grew, oh, those grew on me, actually. Once I saw them at the event, because they were so bold and you were you were watching the game from so far away because oh. it was in Nissan Stadium, it actually grew on me. At the game. It grew on me from the beginning. I do think I they should like go those. back to wearing more navy. Yes. I am of the opinion please. that the gold for the Preds gets a bit overused, but. I like the navy. Okay. Stadium series, baby. 615-737-1045. Hour number three coming up next. The Titans are hosting a corner. Are they just looking for plan B to Legereus Sneed? We'll talk about that next. Hey, it's Kayla Anderson for our friends at Save a Tree. You hear him all the time on our station. Dean Glasscock and his crew do an incredible job when it comes to taking care of your trees and shrubs and everything in between. So winter has hopefully passed. It is officially spring now. And so maybe uh, you're thinking about some landscaping. It is a huge expense, makes a huge impact on your yard. However, if not correctly maintained uh, with your plants, trees, and shrubs, uh, those can die and become a hazard to your home. So Save a Tree can actually help with their team of specialists uh, that can customize a full line of plant health care and pruning services that will make your landscape thrive. Almost everyone has a lawn care company helping to take care of your yards. Why not have a tree company help take care of your trees and shrubs? So give our friends at Save a Tree a call. Simply call 615 615- 299-9999 or for more information you can go online check them out at saveatree.com that's s a v a t r e e.com
What's going on? 8 o'clock. Good morning from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I am Robert Walsh. The madness has begun. The first two games, or the first four games last night, and the next, or the last of the two. This is so confusing. The first four, the first two games started last night. We got two more today. Last night, Wagner taking over Howard, 71-68. Colorado State over Virginia, and possibly the worst offensive game any of us have watched this year. Colorado State won by 20, 62 42. Titans making a nice addition to the defensive line, signing Sebastian Joseph Day. Played in 14 games for the Chargers, two for the 49ers last year, grabbing three sacks and three tackles for a loss. His experience along the entire defensive line will be super valuable for Tracy Rocker. But Titans are done with bringing in veteran additions, bringing in former Colts corner or Bills cornerback Tredavious White for a visit. White was injured in week four of last season against the Dolphins and only tallied 12 tackles and one interception. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Second half of the show and hour number three starts this morning right now on Ramon, Kayla, and Will. RKW is brewed by 8th and Roast, and 8th and Roast is locally owned and operated by lifelong friends turned business partners who design local shops as a way to feel welcomed, connected, and part of a community. Stop by and see them on 8th Avenue, Charlotte, the airport, or the Broadview at Vanderbilt. 8th and Roast Coffee cultivates community by the cup. 615-737-1045 is how you jump in. You stream the show on 104.5 The Zone TV, Facebook Live, YouTube, Twitter, or Twitch. Twitch, please. And if you miss oh. any of our conversations throughout the morning, check out the Ramon, Kayla, and Will podcast page. Go download it. Hit the subscribe button, or if you're on Apple, that is now called the follow button. Hit the plus sign in the top right. You'll be good to go. Helps us and helps you. Because you never miss conversations like the one we had this morning with Jerry Palm of CBS Sports or the one we'll have coming up in an hour with Rep Brian. Yeah. Got another, another good uh, pro tip for the people, man. What's that? Um, I think we all have seen it or have heard about it. Um, if you have social media, if you have the internet, anything, you got to go check out the OTP with uh, mm. what, what what's his name Calvin Ridley Calvin Ridley it's hilarious if you don't want to check out the whole pod which is a shame okay check out the clip that the Tennessee Titans <laughs> posted of, of, oh. of Calvin Ridley being interviewed by Amy Wells and 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 Mike Keefe and they show him his top th- well his 30 visit here in Nashville that's all I'm gonna yeah. tell you if you hadn't seen it go see it because I'm not trying to make you a fan of Calvin Ridley or make the sign signing okay with you. But if you are a human being, you get an opportunity to watch this. One, I'm glad you can see his face because, Kayla, you said a second ago, we were talking about people with helmets on. Like, football players yeah. have helmets. You can't see them. You see no reactions unless somebody's in trouble or something like that. That LeJerry Sneed clip is probably top ten of, of, of things on social media right now. I don't care if you're a Titans fan. I don't care if you're a, a Jacksonville fan. I don't care if you're a Steeler fan. You're going to be a human fan after you watch that exchange between him just smiling. Like, that's all I'm going to tell you. And, and it hits the feels. Yeah. Uh, but it's a pure friggin' reaction, man. I, Bert, were you going to say something? Go, go for yeah, it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Inadvertently, it also has one of the most hilarious moments yeah. I've ever seen in the uh, chain. Uh, not not the chain. The chain was also funny, but whoever edits those videos did Mike kind of dirty because they have a, a very touching moment where he touches Calvin Ridley's leg, saying, "Hey, I didn't, I wasn't trying to touch you in that way. I just <laughs> wanted to show you this video." And then after that, there's a beat for a half a second. Seat Geek is their official sponsor. Of, <laughs> it, it's like they couldn't even let the emotional moment uh-huh. sit in itself for too long. He was like, I, 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 I didn't mean to get you in your feelings like that. I just thought it would be nice to look back at it. 
Can I say one thing about that interview? Because we didn't really talk about that. It happened on a Friday. So uh, we kind of boiled it on the weekend. And then I just wanted to say that interview with the press on Friday was about as raw in a good way as you can ask for, for somebody who is coming to your team, who is hungry, who is playing with a a good chip on their shoulder, if that makes sense, because this guy is going to bring a dog to that wide receiver room. And I think D-Hop has it, but it's a different type of dog. D-Hop is so professional and calculated in everything he does and kind of how he talks and how what he lets you yeah. talk, you know, whereas Calvin's a little raw. And I like that because I feel like that room has been missing that hunger in terms of a wide receiver who is playing to prove something. And I think you're going to see that from Calvin Ridley this season. And if you go back and listen to that interview, you might know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, definitely. And on the 104.5 The Zone Podcast Network, an equally good interview with our good friend Buck Rising. Yes. On the Buck Rising show who had a one-on-one with Calvin last week after he spoke with the media. And you can find that as well under the Buck Rising show wherever you download podcasts. No mm-hmm. doubt. Former Bills corner Tredavious White has a busy schedule this week. Met with the Los Angeles Rams yesterday. And ESPN's Adam Schefter says that Tredavious White has lined up visits with the Titans and Giants for later this week. 29-year-old who is coming off of a torn Achilles suffered during week four of the 2023 season. In the last three years, guys, Tredavious White has played 21 games. ACL tear in 2021, which kept him sidelined for most of 2022, though he did return to start six games and Buffalo's two postseason matchups. Are the Titans only bringing in Tredavious White for luxurious Sneed leverage? Or do you think the Titans should and do have a genuine interest in the former Buffalo Bill? I think there's an interest, but that's where the medical plays a part in it to me. Um, I, I can't be okay with this if I'm not okay with what the uh, Jets got going on. This is the way I view his uh, visit and, and, and interest in bringing him in, man. Uh, Tredavious White, known name, known player. Uh, I'm talking about a really great track record as far as what he's done in his league. But to be 30 with these types of injuries right here, it's a red flag. I'm talking about red flag, red flag when it comes down to, you know, investing in, in him at a high rate. Now, if you get him for a low price, heck, he's out on a prove it tour. Well, I'm talking about get him, take him. I mean, you you know you're going to have the experience. You know you're going to have the ability to put him out there and say, hey, play at your own risk. Um, and, and again, and we're in the growth period as far as this team rebuilding goes. So I like the idea that they entertain a guy like that and also <laughs> simply wants to come here to check it out himself too. It's still so fresh, I feel like, in my mind with the that room in terms of just not not being able to stay healthy, not being able to stay on the field. It's always been about, you know, the depth at that position that's just not good enough in the last few years. And and my mind goes quickly to Christian Fulton. While I think he has the talent, he dealt with so many injuries. And a lot of those were soft tissue. And that's that's obviously a difference, too, in terms of something like an Achilles and things like that. But because of the recent history with um, Tredavious White, I think I'm kind of cautious. Because his first four years, y'all, he was productive. And he was playing in a majority of the games, but right when that 2021 season, you see that the drop off from 14 games to 11, then to six games, then to four games. And then the production's just not there when you're not able to play. And I, I think like if you're moving forward as a franchise and you're moving forward on what you're doing offensively with things, you can't go backwards in terms of the defense and just add, you know, injured pieces. And just because they had a name at one point of their career, I, I'm not a believer in that. So I say, bring him in. Why not? It's not going to hurt you to bring him in, but I think you need to be very cautious when trying to sign a guy like this. And I would only give him one year deal. Right. But why be cautious when you have $50 million to spend? Because I got $50 million. What else are you going to spend it on for this year for a one year deal? Well, I'm not going to spend it on a guy that's coming off an of ACL and, uh, and an Achilles back to back. That don't make, that's not good business to me. I think it is because you've got so much to spend and so many guys are going off the board that you are in the position as the Tennessee Titans to take chances 
that teams like the Jets can't afford to take. And and you have the money in 2024. And again, $50 million, you could set up something easily with Tredavious White where all of the money is guaranteed in one season and you still have plenty to spend in the rest of free agency. I'm about it because I think there's no risk. My, my thing is I ain't got no problem with the risk of bringing him in. My problem is the amount of money it is it takes to <laughs> sign a guy like him. That's my biggest issue is we're talking about in the last two years he's played 10 games. That's not okay to me just because I got $50 million of, of cap to say, all right, we have a luxury piece in signing a guy like that. I love the idea that he can still play or potentially still play coming off these types of injuries. But the people that have these type of injuries where it correlates to an ACL, okay, and then you end up tearing an Achilles, mean he's overcompensated. So when it comes down to the rehab and this Achilles situation, what's going to pop the next time around? Is he going to have hamstring issues mm-hmm. when it boils down to it? I say bring him in. I'll say sign him if he fits what you want to do, but I'm not willing to give him double-digit millions just because he has a name and has been a pro bowl and all-pro type of player. That's my thing is bring him, yeah. sign him. But he's better. He he he's on a true value deal right now. I was gonna say if there, I don't know what the market is for this guy. It clearly making other visits, um, but I don't want to just give away money to give away money. I think that Rand and them have made it clear they're going to be smart about the decisions that they make. So I guess if you can get him like a discounted price, okay, that's fine. Um, Maybe you draft a cornerback this year too in the draft because eventually you're going to have to start getting some young blood in here too. I mean, this guy's 29 years old. He's not going to last much longer in the league, uh, let alone, you know, coming off of two injuries. Um, So I, I guess if you can get him at a cheap, but I, I don't, I'm not, I'm just not, I'm going to pass. It's a one-year deal, and you're not going to spend all this money with the guys that are already off the board, even if you do bring in Legereus Sneed for what a Kansas City radio host said uh, was offered four years, $80 million by the Tennessee Titans. I Like, at this point, it's the reason why I was great with Tony Pollard. It's the reason why you overpay for Calvin Ridley. When you have as much money as the Titans do for 2024, you can afford to take risks like uh, other teams can't afford it. That, that's the thing is at this point, what else are you going to spend it on? Who else is out there? That's going to take that 50 million. I, I, we're saying the same thing, but I, I don't want you to I say still like need a safety as, too. So, I, so yeah, I, I mean, they, $50 million. They, they, no, but, no, I'm not saying that, but the, I mean, put money towards maybe one of these better safeties that are still, that's still out there on the free agency market. And Marcus may who's visiting this week is going to cost you maybe $5 million against the cap. For 2024. Those numbers don't scare me right there. For a guy like Marcus May, the issue I have is Davius White and his last two years of injury. Now, uh, what is this? What, what's the amount of money we're talking about for yeah. Davius White? That's a good question. That's what I want to know. You know what I'm saying? If we're talking about a one for three and a half to four million, yeah. I, I, man, I ain't got no problem. If I got that's 50 cheap. million, oh, man, I'm buying a Bugatti if that's the yeah. case, okay? <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. And that's essentially what he turns into a Bugatti who will have maintenance issues that you have to take care of mm-hmm. for a guy like Tredavious White. You get name recognition, you get respect when you roll a defense out there that has a guy like him. And if you are able and capable of closing this luxurious need deal, because that's it, it was read from what we saw on social media from the Kansas City radio that the Indianapolis Colts have been out, didn't really submit a deal. The Kansas City Chiefs are okay with playing on this tag. They can have an opportunity to three-peat with a guy like him on their roster still. But the idea that the Titans don't want to give up a draft pick, awesome. Do not want to give up a second for a dude like him on top of panel. 20-year for a dude like him, and they're speculating he wants to be $22 million a year? No, give me 19 and a half, 20. Because right now you have no market if nobody wants to give up a deal. So give the concession of being in a no income state. I mean, no state tax uh, state as far as your paycheck goes and take the 20. Unless you just want to see that AAV be as high as it possibly can be. Michael, the FNM Bank Chat says taking chances like this is what got J-Rob fired. Save money and there's always next year. That's not how NFL general managers think. And you can't save money this year and put it towards next year. That's not how the cap works. There is a spin amount you mm-hmm. have to have. You got to hit there a minimum. Is. Yep. And the Titans will easily hit that minimum. But 
It's not like you can just save money and save it the next year. That's not how it works. Mm-hmm. There the is NFL. a rollover factor, but it does not roll over to 100%. Yeah, right. I think it's like 99% of the cap you have to spend. Like if you spend 90 is the floor, that next year you got to spend 99% of it. It's the way the CB, I think, somewhat. I'm off on the values, but that's how it works. I'll do some research in the break, but yeah. I'm pretty sure it's like a m- extra money that you have when the season ends. It's like a 30% rollover to the next year. You don't get to take all of the money in, but I'll, I'll, I'll dust those figures up and yeah. figure it out. Coming up, we'll uh, give you the latest on the Legereus Sneed pursuit from the Titans. Plus, as well, does the NFL have a development problem or a talent problem at quarterback? Next. Hey, it's Kayla Anderson with the Wang Vision Institute. Uh, When it comes to your eyes, they do everything top notch. And that's something we don't do, I feel like, as much. Maybe getting your dentist thing on the books every two years or going to the doctor and getting your checkups. But the eye health seems to be surpassed and so important. And Wang Vision Institute, like I said, their doctors do an incredible job making sure that you know what's going on with your eyes now and Uh, being preventative for the future as well. They also offer everything uh, when it comes to taking care of your skin. Yes, they have introduced the Intense Pulse Light Treatments, non-invasive cosmetic procedure that is highly effective in addressing various skin concerns. Maybe you struggle with sun damage, uh, age spots, redness, uneven skin tone. These IPL treatments are awesome. They can be highly effective in helping reduce all of that. Also, the appearance of fine lines, wrinkle and wrinkles and acne. You can visit wangvisioninstitute.com to learn more about that and to schedule your free consultation. Also, Wang Vision Institute offers, when it comes to your eyes, the free online vision seminars. That takes place every Tuesday at 6.45 p.m. You can RSVP, just go to wangvisioninstitute.com today. Again, that's wangvisioninstitute.com.
We're doing salary cap math on RKW, brewed by Eighth and Roast, right here on 104.5 The Zone. Ramon, Kayla, and Will. 615-737-1045 with a big conversation on NFL QBs coming up here through the second half of the show. And Rhett Bryan, who will join us discussing NFL draft QBs specifically. Okay, so the specifics on salary cap math that we told you we would have an answer for you on after the break. So teams must spend at least 89% of the cap over a four-year period, while the NFL as a whole must spend at least 95% of the cap. If a team fails to reach the 89% threshold, which has never happened, it will be forced to pay the difference to players who were on its roster during those four years. So the, the simple part of that is, hypothetically, yes. The Titans could, if they really wanted to, carry $50 million dollars that they have sitting in cap space right now into next season. However, that's not taking into account draft picks. That's not taking into account other moves that you will make to fill out a roster that is completely incomplete. Mm -hmm. So the comment we made before the break about, yeah, that's not really how it works. A is because this roster is not even close to being finished yet. So you're going to have to spend that money just to field a team unless you want to have, four running backs, a couple quarterbacks, and just have a team of corners, wide receivers with no inside linebackers or defensive linemen or uh, left tackles. like seven on seven. Essentially (laughs) at this point. So, yes, if you really wanted to wait till next year, I guess you could roll $50 over, but um, that is not the way this is going to work. And the Titans have also shown us no reason to believe that they are tanking in 2024 and trying to just go ahead and get ready for 2025. No, no, they've made some don't. moves to show that they want to spend some money. Plus, but... you do that if you want a quarterback in the draft, and the Titans yeah. also haven't shown us they want a quarterback in the draft. No. Sur- surprise! Come April, they're like, we're taking a quarterback. Yeah, but that no. also shows uh, what difference a quarterback being on a rookie deal means to a team, too. Mm-hmm. You look at uh, the team with quarterbacks on their second deal, I'm sure their their flexibility don't look like this, which is why you're always in win-now mode or stack-now mode when you got a uh, what you think is a good quarterback on a rookie deal. And we'll get to this in a minute, but a lot of those rookie quarterbacks aren't getting to that second deal. That's the other part of it. So the Legereus Sneed smoke continues here with the Tennessee Titans. Uh, some interesting stuff within that. Michael Lombardi, uh, who was on this show a couple weeks ago, former NFL GM, uh, went on Pat McAfee yesterday and said, there is no question the Colts had interest in Legereus Sneed and Daniil Hunter and one of them both. Now they have Daniil Hunter. Perhaps they are more out of the Legereus Sneed sweepstakes or perhaps the Sneed stakes. Sneed stakes. Ooh, I like, I like it. I like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, ben Stainbrook, or excuse me, Brad Stainbrook, who's been on this story since day one, Browns insider and reporter, uh, 247 Sports uh, and ESPN Cleveland Tweeted 12 hours ago, the Titans and Sneed have talked in the last 24 hours, according to a source, and said, would not call that possibility dead yet. Meanwhile, Christian Fulton is visiting the Los Angeles Chargers, and credit to Christian Fulton's agent getting Ian Rappaport to tweet, one of the top available at his position, when (laughs) Ian Rappaport put that info out. I respect... (laughs) I respect what his agent is trying to do. You're so petty, man. (laughs) So can I ask, can you think, God, I did the same thing you were doing, Ramon. Now I said, can I ask? Uh, Yeah, no, it's it's contagious. Well, damn, Kayla. Yeah, you can ask her on the the radio show here. So do you still think it's maybe a possibility that they could say, hey, we'll give you a third round in 2025. We'll give you another, you know, maybe add another pick to that. But do you think they can... They can get out of not giving a pick this year. So it, here's the thing with this. And um, Zach Lyons at F words pod, who does a great job on Twitter uh, talking Titans, pretty much listen to the Kansas city radio show uh, that had this discussion uh, yesterday. I believe it was uh, the drive in Kansas city and Matt Verderame, if I'm saying that right, uh, is the radio host who said, Kansas City has to weigh the comp pick that they would get for Snead next year. And that is why the 2025 pick might not be as valuable to them. They're not going to get a third for him next year, but says very likely you get a fourth or fifth round compensation pick 
if Legereus Sneed played in the tag this year and then went elsewhere next year. Mm. So that's part of the reason why a 2025 pick doesn't do a ton for them. Because if you just let him play this year, you chase a third straight championship and just say, all right, we'll make the cap work and you're playing for us. You're still going to get a 2025 or at that point, not 2025, it'd be a 2026 pick in return. So you would already be getting a day three future pick. Is it really worth a day two 2025 pick for luxurious need? Like if you're taking yeah. a future pick, you might as well just wait one more year right. and get maybe close to the same. To, to me, the, the conversation about what Kansas city is willing to do is, you know, oatmeal is better than no meal. It's just like my breakfast. I just had, right? Like, do you want something now for them and get them off your books or, or, or do you just wait it out? And there's benefit to them breaking it out. Like, it's a matter of one or two rounds, right? You mean like, the Titans waiting it out no, or the Chiefs waiting the, it out? The Chiefs waiting it out, too. Like, there's benefit to them. They they don't have to be pressed forward. It's a matter of what they want to receive this year to continue this run. Like, that, he was a fourth-rounder himself, LeJerry Snead. It's not like they haven't seen this in, in a way that they know how to develop or have a guy be a new guy, right? And, and it's a matter of... To me, I think the biggest hiccup in all this is probably going to be Legereus Sneed. That's why I think the biggest issue is because Kansas City doesn't have to do any work but wait on the phone calls to come in for them. I think you're you're partially right. I, I disagree with the part that it's all on Sneed. I think it's all on Kansas City being in win-now mode and demanding a pick this year. To me, I think that's the sticking point. And, and your thing is, how high of a pick are you saying? You're saying they're, they're, they they have to get a two or three? They want a two. They, they want it. And according to uh, the Kansas City radio show, no team has offered a second round yeah. pick. And I think why, why we're not seeing any movement. So that's the reason I'm saying to myself, for Kansas City's sake, like they legitimately have no, they, they really have nothing as far as forcing somebody to give them anything, which is why if I was in, I would wait all the way up and almost to the draft. If I'm the Titans, I'm waiting all the way up to the draft. Yeah. I think that will be Because what it happens. sounds like the Titans are the team in the mix still. Yep. The Colts already went and spent their luxurious need money. The Titans haven't yet. Oh, okay. So and they the, know the Titans need that corner. They, you know? they do. And, and so the question is for me, because that was one of the things in a report too, right? Well, I guess the investigation of this conversation on this Kansas City radio show, that was, a, that was wordy as heck right there. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but it's all right though, right? The, the, the thing is Snead wants his annual annual average, right? To be above 22 yep. million or at 22 million. And the reason I say I'm putting it on Snead is that's an ego thing. That's an agent thing from him and that is a uh, hey would i rather get paid now or later risk myself you know having a bad year what if he goes and have a down year which i doubt in that kansas city defense but he, he puts himself up against the wall if he doesn't take it now now here's the thing if you stand on business and say no nah, i want 22 do that but if you're telling me I can go to my new destination now and be ready to be the guy and also get my payday right now the same thing that kansas city wants then he take the deal for 20, maybe 21 and a half. You front loaded for three years and then you move on. I think it's, it's a little bit of his agent himself in Kansas mm -hmm. City trying to figure out what's going to make them feel clean enough to do this deal. Again, great negotiating to me is both sides feel dirty. And I think the way they're looking at it right now, Kansas City don't want to have any dirt on them as far as giving him up for a bag of chips con uh, considering nobody wants to give up a two. Slipped on my chair. I, I was going to say, are you all right over there? <laughs> Doing great. Um, what are you willing to give up then this year? Are you willing Oof. to part with any picks? What do you have to get back in return along with Legereus Need? What am I willing to give him? The fact that I know he doesn't want to be there? Pair me up at most, at most of three. I give up two fours for a dude like him right now. Yeah, you don't have a three we or two We don't have fours. a three. But what about the thing you brought up in terms of switching twos? That's what I'm willing to do. I'll do it. Swap twos. I'll do it. Swap twos. Move back, I uh, believe, 26 picks. And I don't care. I'll swap 38 twos. 38 to 64. There's still wide receivers there. Okay. I don't think they're taking a receiver with their yeah, second round pick I, and, they, and they might not, you know? I think they're going D-line, inside linebacker, or corner with their second pick. You got to break the streak of taking offensive players at that point. <laughs> you got to do. Don't I think you, you do. Yeah, but what if you have a dang good one there? I mean, it's best. That's why you signed Calvin Ridley. Yeah.
They got a one, two, and three as far as wide receivers go. And you also got NWI, and I'm 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 huge on Colton Dow, so I'm just gonna really? throw, I will not shy away from that. Well, and in now nowadays or number game, five. Yeah. Well, right, and nowadays four. there's always I feel like receivers are now like there's a bunch of them yeah. coming out. Yeah, absolutely. We'll we'll see. I, I just it's a premium, I think, more on the Titan side to pay something like that for for one draft picks that they don't have. Two amount of money for a player that is he going to be supported? I know there was a defensive line signing yesterday, but then you also still have questions at linebacker. Then we also still have questions at safety. Can you support having LeJarrius Sneak come here and just honestly be average until you build it up defensively? Because that's what you're asking. Because right now we're asking the question too, is, is Roger McCurry your number one on the other side? Not for me. That's what I'm no, saying. Like, it's, it, he's not. There, there's a lot. I know Cheeto Bay Awuzi is is here. Awuzi he is still, still to, here he's too. He's got to prove right? himself too. And and and, and I, I feel good about having him. But again, to me, these are steps that are that have to be taken. Um, but I honestly do think this is a Kansas City radio station. I think they got a little bit of a, a of a buffer or a push mm. to make this type of news be a play. I think they're negotiating through the radio right now. It's interesting. Could be. So uh, then, at that point, let's let's expand this conversation because we're going to talk with uh, with Rhett Bryan about quarterbacks coming up, and we can bring him into the discussion uh, we had slated for this point of the show. How willing are you then to roll money over to 2024, 2025? How what am I uh, from the co- and I I was wrong in the way I characterized that you can't move any money over. Yes, you can move some money over. You can move. Whatever you have left from 2024 to 2025. Does it make more sense? To me, it doesn't. But does it make more sense to just not go all in this year and save yourself a ton of cash for 2025? That's been my whole thing anyway. Don't be foolish and spend it. That's where I am. I, you said a second ago, somebody said in the chat, that's how um, we got to the uh, John Robinson situation. It's paying for other people's used goods. That's mm-hmm. been me. you got to be strategic. If you even look at these signings, that's been made here. You got guys that are hungry to make a dash to be a part of the Tennessee Titans. From Calvin Ridley to uh, Murray, I'm talking about to Chidobe Awuzie. Like, you got guys, Lord Cushenberry, who are your guys now. It's not like you got a bunch of one-year dudes, right? The same way I felt about Arden's situation. Arden has to be here and reestablish himself. Right, those are the things that you're asking for when it comes down to these types of signings that you're having. You're not. I, I don't want this franchise to be a one-stop shop for a bag. That's what Clowney got away with. That's what the other dudes have gotten away with when they come here. Ooh. And heck, you even throw in a sense. Uh, that's what Bud got. That was an exciting sign. It's a, an exciting signing that wasn't your guy. And in, in, in all actuality, it was a pit stop for him. These dudes, I don't think, are pit stops for this franchise. And that's where overspending the bag when it comes down to being reckless with free agency gets you. If you can say to yourself, well, I know I can go get a bag here. Like we're seeing right now the way of breaking down with Chase Young. I'm sure there was a – and New Orleans didn't let him out of the city, it seems like, also. But a one for 13 with a guy with a neck issue I'm that passing. we're finding out right now, that's problematic to you. You set yourself back for development and also the cap for years to come when you do that type of stuff. Look, this coaching staff, Rand knows what this franchise had become – before they got here injury prone same kind of issues you're dealing with every year you're signing free agents that aren't for the most part working out with some exceptions they're pushing the reset button when when they push the reset button it's not just flying around cash to those big names that maybe have done things in the past they're gonna be smart about their decision making and maybe some of that money does roll over but maybe they do sign some guys with not the biggest names that they're able to have as depth pieces here, and then they continue to build through the draft, which I think is really what they're going to have to do. I don't think it's a one-year, everything's okay situation. I think it's going to take a couple years. As much as the cap just went up from 2023 to 2024, spend it while you got it, baby. We've been talking all fall about how the Titans will have cap money to spend and how they've got space. Oh, they, they can be in for everyone they want to be. They've got space and how you're going to have to overpay for certain players and take more chances. Do it. Oh, oh, okay. But in that same sense and context, well, if you got 
a, an ample amount of money in your bank account, are you going to go buy a Ferrari just because you got it in your bank account? And yeah. you know that, look, my day-to-day is around town to where I'm a guy that, hey, I need to go to the store, I need to go to work, and I need to go home. What use is you having the money in your account and going to buy a Ferrari going to do for you if you don't really need it and don't have to have it? See, I don't think a Ferrari is a good analogy for Tredavious White. Well, that's what Tredavious White is right now. With I don't the think he's that he's a Ferrari. Had. He's you're, a Ferrari you're, you're not with paying, Band-Aids? No, you're not paying Ferrari level prices for for Trey White right now. Legarius Sneed would be the Ferrari. Oh, oh okay. So well, yeah. Tredavious White to me then is a 2002 a uh, Chevy that's got 80,000 miles on it. Like, that's a lot of miles within, like, two years. If it's either that or walking on foot, which is what you're looking at right now with this defense, then, yeah, absolutely. But I'm not willing to overpay for Traderius White when it comes down to how he's been the last couple of years. We do have to somewhat go on tendencies with this type of stuff. That, to me, is what you call bad business. If I know I can go shake your hand and get $100 every single chance I get, then I'm going to go do it. But I don't want to be passing it out for no particular reason when your proof of concept to stand on the field for a couple of years doesn't line up with what we're trying to do on my team. I just don't want to go back to what this franchise was known as is the walking dead in terms of the injury thing. Like I feel like you're just throwing back into that old habit of, like, oh, okay, well, we're just going to bring this guy. He's had injuries, but you know what? We're going to overlook that because he had also some good years, but he's right. 29. Right, but you're not bringing in Tredavious White to fix your defensive secondary. You're bringing him in to be a number two or three and be a veteran in the room as you draft and mold and try to develop younger defensive backs. Like, the John Robinson way would have been, let's pay Tredavious White a ton to be our number one. Let's go get Malcolm Butler to come in and fix our defensive secondary without getting in guys in the draft who aren't injury prone, right? Like that's what I'm saying is that I don't think this is the John Robinson way of thinking because paying Tredavious White $4 million for one season and having no money on next year, that's not what, that's not the same thing as paying Malcolm Butler over three seasons and then having a dead cap. You you do have Cheeto though and he is a veteran. One for four? Right. That's Sorry. what I'm saying. But yeah. you have a veteran in there. That's Cheeto's again, a veteran. It's like we're saying. I think we're, we're yeah. right, but one for four. Who else? Eating that all day. 100%. That's yeah, what I'm saying. One for four. Yes, 100%. That's, that's why I don't think Tredavious White is the. I don't think you're breaking the bank at all. You got to spend the money, so spend it. I'm cool with one for four. I told you, that's my price range. For but all. is that it? I. Is that what he's going to take? 615 737 We'll continue the conversation. Take your phone calls on this next. Hey, it is that time of year to get out and enjoy life a little bit as hopefully we'll be seeing some warmer temperatures come here to Middle Tennessee. Didn't stop letting that pain in your joints keep you from doing what you love to do. Call QC Kinetics now. QC Kinetics is the nation's leader in regenerative medicine. And I'm talking about lasting joint pain relief. None of this just a couple of weeks and you're back to the pain, right? No surgery, no drugs, no downtime. In fact, QC Kinetics is transforming lives and they've having having their advanced treatments. It's actually harnessing your own body's ability to restore and repair that damaged tissue. That's the difference. And pro athletes, we've heard about them doing this for decades, but now this life changing treatment is for you. So you can walk and run, climb the stairs, play with your kids, play golf, just move again, pain free. No pain pills, no risky surgery. It's an all natural solution. QC Kinetics has tens of thousands of satisfied patients who have reclaimed their mobility. So now you can check it out for yourself. Call QC Kinetics for a free consultation today. Simply call 615-249-4024. That's 
Wednesday morning at RKW, brewed by 8th and Roast and Rhett Bryan of Titans Radio. Coming up in 10 minutes, we're going to discuss position groups week by week every Wednesday with Rhett leading up to the NFL draft. 615-737-1045 is how you jump in. Let's go to Mike in Cleveland first up. What's up, Mike? Oh, Mike. <laughs> there you go. Uh, big horn. What's up with you? What's up? Yo, where where this snow where is this snow coming from, man? You know? Oof. And I, I just got a little PSA real quick. Look, I get it. It's a wreck on the highway. You know, all you four wheelers out there, you know, it's a wreck. You wanna let people know on your social media, on your Facebook and stuff, man, put them cameras away and be safe. You ain't gotta you ain't gotta show everything on your social media. You're putting a lot of people in danger, okay? Mm-hmm. So I just wanna say that real quick, you know. We ain't gotta film everything all the time. It'll be okay. Now, football. We've been talking about Rand and letting them cook, right? And I hear y'all's back and forth. I was calling about Ridley in that interview because I was hyped over that interview, but you know, I I I'm I'm gonna give y'all this real quick. We've been saying let Rand cook. Let Rand cook. So this is what I'm posing. I really think going into this season uh, is just that. This offseason, we're trying to see what seasons match with our head chef, Bill uh, Brian Callahan. We know we had salt. We know we had some pepper. We done added a little bit of seasoning salt. You know, we done added a little bit of olive oil instead of vegetable oil so it ain't too heavy. We just trying to slide down the throat. You dig? Phrasing. So with that being said, I really feel like we are trying to get this offense in a in a much better place than what the Titans are known for. We ain't bringing Calvin Ridley in to go out there and block for the run. We ain't trying to shove a system down these players' throat. We're trying to develop, and we're trying to get the recipe of our system, right? So that may, so that might mean, like Moan, like you were saying, partner, that might mean that defense might have to take a, a back seat, for lack of a better term. Let's see what we got on defense. We know we got the water boiling for the mac and cheese. The chicken is marinating. It's the offense. We got the we got the water boiling for the mac and cheese. We know we got some cheddar cheese, but do we got some pepper jack? Do we got some gouda? We're going to find out exactly what we need. Do we want to <laughs> sprinkle breadcrumbs on top of it? You dig what I'm saying? Just to get a little toasty. You did? So let this, you know, we just got to sit back and let all this recipe come together. And when it come together, Mom, what you've been saying for all these years, everybody's going to eat. And that's the point. That right there. So that's my two cents, y'all. Most love, doses. Keep me in your prayers. Absolutely. Thank you, Mike. Stay safe. Appreciate the call. My goodness. I hate that when people take out phones or stop traffic because they're looking at a wreck. Oh, it's going to happen. Just keep moving. Yeah. Keep moving, people. To wrap a bow on the Trey White conversation, what's the absolute most you're willing to pay for him? Because he has a name, and you got to respect him for being all pro four and a half, no more than five. Yeah, I'm not giving him more than five, and I'm giving him a year. A year and five. Let's say six and a half. Too much. That's fair. Six and a half for a year. Because I think a one-year low-risk deal doesn't really hurt you. No. Even if you overpay just a little bit. The four number is what I threw out as just... (laughs) throwing out a number at the end of the segment, the end of the conversation of what the range could be. Four would not be an overpay. Does no. mm-hmm. spot track have his value up? Mark it doesn't. It okay. All right. Not to my knowledge. It, I, I may be looking in the wrong place, though. Oh, good. No, it's usually right there for you. You can't see it. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough to estimate for a guy like that coming off of an injury. Yep. His uh, previous deal uh, would have had him this season on a base salary of eight point three million and a cap hit of sixteen point four. Yeah. Obviously, he's not going to get close to that. Nope. And uh, in twenty twenty five, his deal would have had him a cap hit at four point one. So I do think okay. you're you're somewhere within the maybe I don't know the the base salary that season is still ten point four. The cap hit is. One very small piece of the equation, but who else is he going to visit again? There were, I think, there were two other places uh, yeah, besides two other the Titans: places. Rams, yep. Giants, Raiders. Also okay, expected so to meet with him. There you go. Who's willing to pay him the most? Yeah, he'll be took care of, and I think he can play. Uh, it's a matter of, of course, being on a team that understands you, uh, yeah. your your body, and and how you're going to go. He's a vet now. This is not a guy who is the fix. He is a body who is experienced to at his best and healthiest 
could perform decently well. Facts. Mm-hmm. He's not the fix. And basically, we have this entire conversation to dive into the cap details and understand what the Titans want to do, not just because he is the talking point, right. if that makes yeah. sense. Right. Right. And I still think the long-term fix isn't even a, a sneed. I mean, that's a, that's a now fix, too, because he is a little bit older. The, the long-term fix is draft the damn guy. Yeah. Draft him. Sneed makes you competitive. Yeah. For a, yeah. For, a, for a little bit. Yeah. Sure. Coming up, Rep Brian, Titans Radio. Let's talk some QBs next.
What's going on, you bunch of hooligans? 901. Good morning from the 1045 The Zone Studios. I am Robert Walsh. The madness has begun. Two games last night, two more today. Wagner 71 over Howard 68 and Colorado State and Virginia and what was one of the poorest offensive performances in NCAA history. Colorado beats Virginia by 20 points, 62 to 42. Titans make a nice addition to the defensive line in signing Sebastian Joseph Day. Played 14 games for the Chargers, two for the 49ers last year, grabbing three sacks and three tackles for a loss. His experience along the entire defensive line, extremely valuable for Tracy Rocker. Also, Titans aren't done bringing in veteran additions as they're bringing in former Bills cornerback Tredavious White for a visit. White was injured week four against the Dolphins last year and only tallied 12 tackles and one interception. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Fourth quarter of the show, the fourth and final hour of Ramon, Kayla, and Will starts right now. Brewed by Eighth and Roast, Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Robert Walsh makes the show happen. Rhett Bryan joins us in studio every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. I'm just Will. 615-737-1045 if you've got a Titans topic. Otherwise, we're talking QBs. Good morning, Rep. Brian. Good morning. And I think we're going to start to refer to you as JW, just Will. Perfect. <laughs> I'm just JW. Will. I'll, just, I'll go buy there a Marriott. It is. I knew right, I was going to play. <laughs> just Will. <laughs> He's just Will. It's true. <laughs> Here we go. He, he just will. will. <laughs> <laughs> so the good. man behind the bland <laughs> might be my favorite line. <laughs> right? The haters man. and losers oh, are sick. Oh, wow. The haters, of whom oh. there are many, are having a terrible morning. Is it sick that when they performed that at the um, Oscars, or yeah, the Oscars, and it was Ryan Gosling who did an incredible job, I was literally saying, he's just Will. It's good. As really? they were saying, thing. I'm just Ken. It's like, nah. Kayla. What are you doing? Oh, yeah, that's like our show. Sure. I, I, our missed, show. I missed the Oscars this year. I it was even good. Watch it, man. it was good. Crazy. You grouch. I usually don't <laughs> watch the Oscars if I have not watched. I, I had a thing where for several years I would watch every nominated movie in certain categories just so I'm apprised and know what's what and then to see how it all kind of unfolds but anyway i usually right. watch it just to see what movies i need to be seeing that's what i do yeah, i get sure. lost yep. in, in, now and i'm gonna put air quote busyness in well, life let me I'm say like, this right, let me though, check and see what's hot you can take that with a grain of salt because what the critics like and what i like usually are two <laughs> different things in a lot of cases when you're talking about no doubt the academy awards but anyway yeah you're right his quarterbacks uh is uh, i think was more- <laughs> What a transition. Yeah, that's called a train wreck segue there. Quarterback. The, turn. the Academy of Quarterback. He's just Caleb. Oh, yeah. And he's likely going to be a Chicago oh, Bear. Goodness, yeah, right? absolutely. Um, so we're a little over a month out from the draft. And uh, yeah, so Will messaged me last night. He said, hey, you want to start running through positions? Let's start with quarterback. I'm like, okay, great. This is perfect because... I, I would urge you to take a listen to Daniel Jeremiah and Bucky Brooks do a great job on their Moving the Sticks podcast. And this latest episode that dropped, I don't know, four or five days ago, Bucky is working on this large project about quarterbacks and trying to find out, in air quotes here, what he calls the secret sauce to getting a quarterback that you draft up high that's a hit. And it was a super interesting conversation. And I know in the in the next segment we're going to go over some of the top quarterbacks 
uh, prospects in this draft. But what he was saying in this is looking at some of the median average range of collegiate starts at their perspective programs. And so he's talking about how the game has changed and how, you know. So what he did is he looked at pre-2011 current modern CBA with rookie pools, slotted salaries, et cetera. So from 1998 to 2010, 20 quarterbacks taken in the top 10, eight of those 20 hit. That's about a 40% rate. And his definition of a hit was someone who at least became a decent starter for your team and may have even led them to the playoffs. So, you know, that kind of a floor all the way up to uh, a a Patrick Mahomes who's won three out of the five last world championships, right? Uh Uh-huh. So, um, since then, 2011, when the CBA changed drastically to current day, 2023, 25 quarterbacks taken in the top 10, and I forget how many of those hit, but it it was less. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing he brought up is in the class before that, in the the window where it was Phillip Rivers, Peyton Manning, Carson Palmer, Donovan McNabb, the average median career quarterback starts was 38 and a half career games. In college. In college. In college. Okay. For example, Phillip Rivers, 51 starts. Peyton Manning, 45. Carson Palmer, 44. Donovan McNabb, 49. Two of those four sat for a while before they played. Carson Palmer sat for a year. And because of the Drew Brees, Phillip Rivers dynamic, Phillip Rivers sat for two years. Peyton Manning, Donovan McNabb. Hold up, thrown... Phillip Rivers sat for two years? Mm-hmm. I did not yeah. know that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. news to me. Yeah, because they had Drew Brees at the same time. Sure did. And then the trade happened in New mm-hmm. Orleans. Okay, okay. So uh, it, so anyway, uh, Peyton Manning, Donovan McNabb thrown into the fire. And, you know, they talk about, well, it was teams were more patient back then. There's really not that much patience. It's just you know what you have in a quarterback – and you know you're going to see early on, and they're going to make mistakes. I mean, Peyton, for example, led the league in interceptions. I think he had 32 interceptions or something crazy like that in '98. So, um, but what's crazy is you look at the quarterbacks in the modern era, 2011 to 2023. Justin Herbert, 42 career college starts. RG3, 40. Marcus Mariota, 41. Baker Mayfield, 46. Daniel Jones had 36. Jared Goff had 37. Trevor Lawrence had 36. And so the median there in that group is 29 career college starts. In fact, the average exactly is 29.1. Anybody with 29 starts or less wasn't a hit. Wow. Not a hit in the Hmm. NFL. Mm. Now, uh... And I told you, almost 39 games for those guys, a little older, they're now getting gold jackets and going to the Hall of Fame. Right. So well over 30 quarterback starts is one of the tipping points in trying to find the secret sauce, as Bucky Brooks would say. Interesting. Uh, the outliers, as you, as you would imagine, Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen, 28 career college starts. And both have had very nice careers. One has gone to the promised land, and the other's been waiting at the altar. But even with Patrick Mahomes, he sat for a year. That's correct. And that's behind Alex Smith. As far as Josh Allen goes, he developed under pressure with his 55%, 50% uh, passion, I mean, completion rate. And then he took that year. So they were, I ain't going to say trash enough, but they had enough growth in him enough to where he was he was given three years before it turned on. And that's why when we discuss the top couple of pods of quarterbacks here in the next segment coming up, we're going to talk about, because it, it goes down to not just what their career, collegiate career was, but what is the fit and mm-hmm. the ideal situations and examples of what has worked and what hasn't, depending on... And look, you're going to get drafted where you get drafted. And uh, unless you're Eli Manning, and then you say, no, I'm not going to the Chargers. I'm going to go to New York. Which is something... And this is something nobody's talking about. This is something Caleb Williams could do. Like, everybody's got him penciled in as the number one quarterback, and he may very well be. And I have nothing to base this on, but it's like, let's not just assume that that's what's going to happen. Crazy things happen in the NFL draft in particular as it pertains to the quarterback position. Right. I, I want to add to that really quick. I did some research last night, and I, I read a really good article, 
article from the Business Journal who kind of spoke about, you know, since 2011, like you had mentioned, they said in the first round, not just top 10, but first round 38 quarterbacks drafted in that group, they've lost or tied more games than they've won. Then I started to look through all these teams' picks, and it was a little bit of a disturbing trend, too, in terms of franchises that continue to not get it right. And I think you see some of the similarities in, like, in Arizona, who were still waiting on Kyler Murray. Mm-hmm. I get it. But before that, it was Josh Rosen that was a complete flop. Yep. You see the, the Browns have continuously made – you know, maybe not the greatest choices, or you could (laughs) say maybe they didn't give Baker enough time if you want to go in that direction. Jacksonville, before they had Trevor Lawrence, y'all, do you know who they had? Blake Bortles and Blaine Gabbert were first-round picks by them. That's right. Chicago with Mitchell Trubisky and And Justin Fields, who now has been passed And see, you just brought up my whole point. Right. Mitch Trubisky, yep. 11 career starts, starts at the University of North Carolina. Yep. Let's see, it's Less a- than probably any of these guys we're mentioning by far. And I know we got the quarterback conversation to be had, too, on this same topic, essentially. But here's the thing, though, too. One, they we've created a culture that says, go when you hot. From basketball to baseball to football, go when you're hot. Connor Bedard, right? Go when you're hot. Like, how much development does he have to have as far as hockey goes? We live in that culture, that space. And here's the other thing I think snake bites the entire operation in college is that as it pertains to these quarterbacks, even the coaches are living that life. What am I trying to do if I'm an offensive assistant in college? Go get a head coaching job. So the instability of the offenses that these players are, 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 are potentially being brought up under, they don't have them. Goalish. When they got a head coaching job, Right. I'm sure it would be better off if he can stay on the hype for four years as far as Tennessee's situation goes. But everybody has this go-now mentality. Mm -hmm. And I think that's hurting a lot. Sure. Now, Kayla, to circle back to what you just said, and I know we got to go to break in a second, but uh, listen, teams missing on prospects, there's a lot of variables there as it pertains to the quarterback especially. Unless you are sitting in the catbird seat like the, the Bears are with the number one overall pick. You're going to be if you're picking somewhere in that top group, you're you're not great anyway because of the way you finished mm-hmm. your win loss record in your position, correct? But it's different with the quarterbacks because you are swinging for the fences mm-hmm. and you're hoping above all hope that you have the next Patrick Mahomes. And this goes down to beauty is in the eye of the beholder. The evaluators of talent for that Absolutely. particular franchise, the, the the scouts, who's standing on the table for them, who does the GM like, who does the coach like. And you may have that belief that, you know, but because of structure around them or it was just a bad, you know, sometimes it makes it, sometimes it does not. Mm-hmm. And that's what's it crazy. There, bottom line, there is no exact science to nope. getting the next franchise quarterback, but we're starting to pick through some things that are some indicators that are helpful along the way. Yeah. And it's great research uh, by you and, and interesting stuff. And I think the other variable that's the difference for one of those outliers in Josh Allen had the same offensive coordinator for his first four seasons in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Brian Dable was with him from 2018 to 2021. If you're going to take the risk with a guy who's maybe had less starting experience. And you just outlined one of the main reasons why Justin Fields. Right is with the Pittsburgh Steelers right now and not still with the Chicago Bears. 100%. Coming up next with Rhett Bryan, we'll talk some quarterbacks in the NFL draft. How big of a gap is there between the fourth and fifth best quarterbacks? And what is the over-under on where Bo Nix could go in the first round? That and more with Titans Radio's Rhett Bryan next.
Hour number four on Ramon, Kayla, and Will. <laughs> RKW brewed by Eighth and Roast with Rhett Bryan in studio. Lots of talks about quarterbacks in the NFL draft this week. Rhett Bryan, there was a Mel Kuyper mock draft that had Bo Nix going number 12 overall to the Denver Broncos. If I gave you an over-under of, let's say, 17 and a half, are you taking over 17 and a half or under where Bo Nix is selected in the first round? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of putting you on the spot. I apologize. Yeah, no, no, no. I still say I'd go over 17 and a half. Okay. A little little lower in the draft than that. But, again, quarterback draft, completely different from the rest positionally. Could happen. And I think a lot of that hinges on where does J.J. McCarthy go. And, you know, piggybacking off of our conversation uh, in the first segment, and listen, go go to 104.5 The Zone bod- podcast. They'll Bird will have that rascal up and we'll be ready to roll but you'll get what i'm driving at here is this interesting conversation i heard with bucky brooks and daniel jeremiah on their moving the sticks podcast about trying to find hit rates and quarterbacks so bo nicks 6'2 214 hands 10 and an eighth inch eight inches uh hand size is always something we're talking about especially with kenny pickett a couple years ago uh 61 career collegiate starts had a long career in in college between a couple of universities 66.4 percent completion uh rating 108 to 26 that's his touchdown to interceptions and Bo is the thing about him like he can play the position and i'd feel he can probably play it at the next level at least at the very least as a backup eventually mm-hmm. uh somebody may fall in love with him and give him a chance to be a high draft pick uh up in the neighborhood you're talking about but the thing that you'll see on him consistently in the film ramon is he does not throw it past the sticks with regularity like that is the difference between he and drake may drake may has more big time throws over the middle in that second tier of the defense yeah. than anybody in college football coming out. Hmm. Like he's a he really good at that. Now I'm not saying I'm, but Bo Nix is not a bag of potato chips. Right. I mean he's good. So, but Bo Nix is just one of uh, a handful of guys that that could go on night one. And I, I think Bo Nix because of where J.J. McCarthy ends up in this thing, somebody may just go ahead and snag him in the first round and complete the run on quarterbacks. Uh, Bo, Bo Nix, that is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think Bo Nix could certainly be drafted in the first round, and he might be tr- drafted up that high. I mean, anything can happen with this stuff. And it is difficult. We talk about if the NFL has a quarterback talent problem or a quarterback development problem. Bo Nix comes from one of those offenses as well where so many of the throws – are horizontal, bubble screen, tunnel screen to the outside, where, yes, you're throwing it 15 to 20 yards accurately, but you're doing so side to side and less so vertically as you would in a pro-style offense. Exactly, and that's why a lot of his throws don't make it past the sticks. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily all his fault. Of course. But that's one of the things you'd look at. You're you're also seeing the NFL league that's starting to do that more and more too, though. You you mm-hmm. see that that I, I remember um, the offense that we had was just like man that 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 sideline pass is good as a five yard run, and they start to adopt that. And the more coaches do that in college, the more the NFL will do it. Again, you need to be able to spin, spin the ball down the field, which is I think Bo Nix is capable of doing. Sure, it's a matter mm-hmm. of asking him and demanding. Tom Brady him to do of the that. Patriots live, made no living off of that for twenty years. Right. They just death by a thousand paper cuts. And oh it depends gosh. on just what your team is built off of in terms of offense. Like the more playmakers you have, the more guys like. You know, you can get out of situations. You're you're going to be able to do that type of football. And Kayla, play that your, type, your, type of football. Your point is so valid with one of the members of the top tier of these quarterbacks, and it's JJ McCarthy. Mm-hmm. JJ McCarthy, six two and a half, two nineteen, hands nine inches, sixty five percent. I'm sorry, sixty seven point six percent completion percentage, forty nine to eleven touchdown to interception, fastest quarterback to 25 wins in the 144 year history of Michigan football. Dang. Pretty special. Only 28 starts. So there's the there's one of the tipping points, but he 65% of his throws make it past the sticks. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons why I think he will cuz there's a 
big divide in what we think publicly about J.J. I just don't know. If you go back and look at his film, first of all, he wasn't asked to do a whole lot. And second of all, when he was, he made plays. The, there are a lot of NFL teams that are in love with this guy. And for for, for good reason. Um, and it's going to depend on the situation he lands into. Your, to your point, Kayla, it's one of the reasons why Bryce Young went into a bad situation at Carolina. Yeah. They didn't oh, have the wow. weapons around him. And, and I'll give you one example. If J.J. McCarthy were to go to the Minnesota Vikings, and they could very well trade up to do whatever now that they've acquired another first-round pick, that's a perfect place for him. You don't have to ask him to do quite as much because you've got things around him, and you've got Justin Jefferson to throw to. So you can set him up for success. Like One of the outliers in all this research that Bucky Brooks had been doing is Mark Sanchez, but look at where he went to. He went to the Jets, yes. who had a really good team around him. They went to back-to-back -back AFC Championship games. They were loaded. Now, then. there was the butt fumble and things didn't work out, but <laughs> it, you can go to the right place, right time. That's a good point. It, it's interesting, too, with J.J. McCarthy, Rhett, how much the Giants could be the wild card within that top seven. Because teams no longer need to trade with the Titans to get ahead of Atlanta. They've got Kirk Cousins. But teams may want to trade in front of New York to four or five if the Cardinals want to move back and decide, look, we, there's enough wide receivers in the mix where we can go back seven picks and still maybe get, heck, even Roma Dunze. I doubt it, but maybe. And you've got the Chargers sitting right there at five who are in the same boat and want to change their style of play. But the Giants, to me, as a team that could sit J.J. McCarthy behind Daniel Jones for a season, intrigues me. The only question is, do you really want a quarterback learning from Daniel Jones when you, you don't even want Daniel Jones? <laughs> I mean, yeah, and you, but you bring up a valid point. Could they select him at six and then sit him a year? Like, I'd have to look and see what their cap situation is. Right. But, um, yeah, because you're not moving Daniel Jones with that contract no. you gave him. Right. I mean, it, you're right. talking about taking a bath just like the Denver Broncos just right. did with, with Russ, uh, with Russell Wilson. So, um yeah, I mean, that's what's fascinating about all this. All right, so the other quarterbacks involved in all this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Who's your number um, two behind Caleb Williams? It'd probably be Drake May. Okay. Okay. Um, and if not, and it's real close with he and Jaden Daniels, in my opinion. All right, Drake May, 26 career starts at Drake North May. Carolina. Mm -hmm. And 6'4, 223, 9 and 1 8 inch hands, but prototypical size quarterback. 64.9% completion percentage, 63 touchdowns to just 16 interceptions. And like I said, big time throws over the intermediate part of the field, 10 to 20 yards down the field. He's really good at. Yeah. Um, arm talent is there. He can make the throws. Think about Caleb Williams. Of course, Caleb Williams. Um, was he 6'1", barely 6'1", 214, hands 9 and 3 quarters, 66.9% completion percentage, 93 touchdowns to 14 interceptions. And the thing that sets him apart, uh, look, you can talk about the escapability and extending plays with his body and people want to draw a line to Patrick Mahomes. That's just one Patrick Mahomes. That's he's true. really yeah. good at this. Yeah. I don't think he's Patrick Mahomes yeah. at this. Right. But his processing skills are exquisite they are supreme he is really good in breaking down the field in front of him and i think that's one of the things that you know he could very well you watch him and it looked like he's computing yeah mm -hmm. calculating uh, calculating it's, it's yeah, weird yeah, yeah. watching him because you see sure right to you, uh, and i i'm gonna let you finish no but no you're like, good it's fascinating watching him because it it does look like he's computing like i, I think when we think of mobile quarterbacks we think of get the ball and roll Get it in a row. He actually sits in the pocket. That's another advantage to him, too. He doesn't want to move out of the pocket unless he has to. And his ability to compute in the pocket from what I've seen as of late and deliver in the pocket and throw with a purpose is so friggin' good. Right? Sure. So with saying that, though, you go to Chicago's you know, past in terms of how they've drafted, and look, they haven't had – a lot of talent there to provide these quarterbacks with. You could also go into a little bit of development with changing coaches. 
Do you feel like if Caleb is taken at this number one spot, which, by the way, there's been jokes about, hey, saying I'm not going at number one to Chicago. Sure. Like, there's been talk about that, mm-hmm. like an Eli Manning type of thing. Yep. Do you feel like he has now enough to set him up from success, sin- like from day one, Rhett? Because there will be a lot of pressure for him to contribute day one. And we know there is not a long leash anymore. Sure. And, and as, as it pertains to... To the Bears, I think they've done enough mm-hmm. and continued to build. He he set for up for success there. He yep. is. They've had a nice run in free agent. Look, Ryan Poles is making moves out here. I mean, yeah. he started it last year when they traded, you know, uh, with Carolina and you got know. DJ Moore. Anyway, so yeah, I, I think he could certainly be set up. And and the only reason I say that, let's not call him a lock to go number one overall is. What we're talking, what we have, no one's really discussing about is off the field. His dad is his kind of his rep- representation. Oh, right. I think there's kind of a Lavar Ball vibe there, and you know, I think football character is so an, such an important thing. It, Rand Carthon talks to us about it all the time. About football do you players. love the game? Yeah, I think he does, but I don't know how much. Like, th- th- that's the only thing I'm questioning. I'm not questioning the young man's talent, his potential, his athletic prep, none of that. It's the other thing. Yep. So that's why Ryan Poles, the general manager of the Bears, and the, and the brass are there at Southern Cal to see his workout today Perfect. because they want to do their vetting on mm-hmm. this. Um, and then Jaden Daniels, first of all, we've watched him over the years at LSU. I really like this young man. Big like, fan. I, I honestly, and I'm serious when I say this, This is a poor correlation. I don't like necessarily doing player comps, but he is a more polished version of Lamar Jackson coming out of college. I'm not saying he's Lamar Jackson. I'm not saying he's going to beat you in world speed, but I because of the difference in competition. Because Lamar played at you know uh, Louisville, Louisville, and and this guy played in the SEC. Fifty five career starts. Six four two ten. Uh, I don't think he did a hand size measurement at the combine. Sixty six point three percent completions, uh, completion percentage, eighty nine touchdowns to twenty interceptions, and we saw what he did down the stretch last year. Like it was, it was. People thought it was going to be Caleb Williams was going to win back to back Heisman's. He ran away with it. Ran away mm-hmm. with it. LSU's not competitive without him, and I know that's nope. stating the obvious right there. But as as much as he got hit in the SEC, and there was a clip of him just getting torn <laughs> yeah. apart. He takes a lot of hits. But he's he, I, I can't, you only tough for so long in the NFL. 100%. That's facts. He but got put on some weight, too. He, yeah, and, 210 at 6'4". 210. Yep. He, I, I think the world of him. I do. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be completely honest with you. It, it depends on who his OC going to be and the type of team that he is. But I see him as being the type of player that if you are a trash team, you're going to find yourself in a position like, boy, they got something. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I I think what you'll get out of him is what you initially saw from a Levis. Like, oh, I see the talent for the people that got questions, and th- and it got to it got to grow. You got to see, you know, full out. You got to water it, put it in the yeah. sun, let it bloom, all that type of stuff. But he, I think he will be that type. And and that's the difference in what we were just talking about with JJ McCarthy. Like JJ McCarthy going to New England at three, not good for JJ McCarthy. Right. Jaden Daniels a little more suited to be able to – it's going to be rough for whoever goes there. I think he's a little more suited to be able to do that mm-hmm. because, again, 55 career starts in the Southeastern Conference. Yep. Ain't not going to Big Ten. They won it all. They got a million players at the Combine, well, and they're going to have you know. a bunch. They'll let you know. Yeah, oh, that, that, there's no question. But I just – I it just depends on the fit and where we're going. And then the other one out of this, and I think he's going to be a night two selection, is Michael Penix Jr., uh, you know, didn't have a great game in the national championship. You saw what he did against the Michigan defense, and I'm not knocking Michigan defense. They did a great job. But, you know, he 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 had trouble there. And you know what I forgot about? He has a tie to, to Middle Tennessee. Penix? His father was a record-setting running back at Tennessee Tech. In fact, I think he was born in Cookville That's right. before he moved to Florida. Yep. Michael Penix, 6'2", 216, hands 10 and a half, 63.3% completion percentage, 96 touchdowns to 34 interceptions. And I think one of the biggest things as to why he'll be a night two selection pretty early on is the, the medical stuff. And that's no fault of his own. Like two knees, two shoulders, 
uh, was almost medically retired at one point, much like the pass rusher from UCLA via Washington, uh, Lyotu Latu. Latu, Latu yeah. uh, so anyway, you know, I think there, there's talent there. It's just I don't think it's in the top tier with the guys we've been mentioning. It does feel like in a lot of ways he could be the Hendon Hooker of yeah. this draft class. System that's difficult to translate, difficult to evaluate, maybe from a but quarterback may, position. maybe sitting for a different yep. reason. Exactly. He's right. healthy, right. but he's had a long medical history. Right. It's not the current knee injury. It's the, the couple in the past. Right. Um, interesting, when we talk about Jane Daniels as well, he was throwing touchdown passes to Brandon Ayuk in his Arizona State career. That is how long he has played in college. Genuinely, when he started his career at Arizona State, somebody posted a video of this yesterday that I saw of like the the timeline of COVID quarterbacks and some of the players they played with is insane. That Brandon Ayuk and Jaden Daniels were on the same team at Arizona State together. Pretty wild. That is. I mean, is wild. that and is that a beneficial thing? Obviously, in terms of you played a lot of football, but then again, you are a little bit older as that guy that's the rookie quarterback. Yeah. Well, and and this is one of the last times we will see the old yeah. older rookie right? class because of that. This is probably Oof. one of the last twenty five. This next. This next draft, I got a mic here. I should talk. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. (laughs) Is this thing on? I was just sitting back enjoying the conversation there. But this next draft is where we should see the end of that. Yeah, and there won't be quite as many. As many. Uh, He's 23. He's not like he's 25 or 26. He's 23? And by the way, Michael Penix, uh, 45 career starts in college. Oh, I thought thought you were going to say he's 45. (laughs) No, no, no. He's (laughs) Some of these guys might seem like they're 45. Like Bo Nix has been playing, seems seems like, I don't know, since like 2015 or something exactly. <laughs> he had the first ever nil deal bo Nix. wow and see that's the other thing that is the underlying factor in all of what we've been discussing this hour as it pertains to quarterbacks is what is going to be the median average tipping point of a hit rate quarterback in the top 10 selections in the future when we account for transfer portal nil all those kinds of things because mm-hmm. man it's I don't know how college coaches are sane recruiting. Nah. Like the guy, I, hey, it took down Nick Saban. It did. He's mm-hmm. like, you know what? Right. This is more than I want to deal with. I'm yep. done. Oh, I'm done. And I respect that he at least was honest about it. Sure. You know? uh, oh, I kind of want to make Nick Saban my you're not that guy. I'm going to be oh, real with you. Yeah, because yeah, the issue is now he's complaining about everyone paying players, acting like he's not paid a player in his entire career. Yeah, and I'm, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, him, him and Dabo, why don't y'all have a seat on that conversation? <laughs> I'm, 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 man, yeah, don't get me started. He was that close to me calling into the show and just <laughs> been uh, making it, okay? What, when right, he, when he spoke in, where was he the other day? It was the Congress. Congress the other day. Uh, Rhett Bryant in studio every Wednesday here on RKW. We will continue our positional previews next week. Rhett, thank you as always. Thank you, Rhett. Time for a little Wednesday motivation to pull us out of the ditch, right? Right. Inky Johnson does it every time. Oof. I don't need to say the anything else. right there, baby. Inky Johnson's next. Twitch, please. All right, here we go, man. Uh, man, it's Ramon Foster for Wesley Mortgage. I'm here to, I'm going to give you the website now, and I'm going to tell you later, all right? Whywesley.com. That's the website you need to have, okay? And right now, Wesley Mortgage, they're currently recruiting top mortgage talent in the middle Tennessee area. If you got friends outside of this area, okay? And here's the thing about them. The, 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 the owner of Wesley Mortgage, Chuck McDowell, man, he's a local Nashville native. If you've met him, you know that. You hear it. You see it. He cares about this community and is proud to serve it, too. And Chuck reinvests in the people and the places that make Nashville such a wonderful place. And it is on its way even up, even more so, okay? Because while other mortgage companies are downsizing, Chuck McDowell and the Wesley Mortgage team are rapidly expanding in Nashville, keeping people working in a career they love, and they will love to have you join their team. With their team, you have have unique networking opportunities with the Tennessee Titans and the Music City Grand Prix. Grand Prix. They make closing deals and building relationships fun again, all right? And if you met Chuck McDowell, you know he's a great human being and even more fun is had around him. So if you're in the mortgage industry and you're tired of the grind, tired of the pressure, and tired of micromanaging, guess what? Go to whywesley.com and be sure to tell them that Ramon sent you over there.
Wednesday morning, ramping up the show on Ramon, Kayla, and Will, RKW, brewed by Eighth and Roast. Coming up tomorrow morning on the program, we're going to talk with Coach Dave McGinnis an hour later than usual at 8.20 on your Thursday morning because national NFL reporter Adam Kaplan will join us at 7.20. He has had a lot of information on the Titans that has ended up being prophetic. Mm -hmm. Had the Titans in on Ridley, happened. Had the Titans in on Pollard, that happened. Had the Titans in on C.J. Gardner-Johnson, they tried to make that happen and didn't. So, we'll see what else can happen. 615-737-1045, the final call for phone calls before we get to Inky Johnson coming up in just about five minutes. Let's go to Jason in Murfreesboro. Go ahead, Jason. Hey, guys. Morning. Hey, good morning. I was just thinking... Uh, Scenario-wise, you know, you got J.J. McCarthy in Michigan, and you do have, you know, Jim Hollar coming over, you know, to the Chargers. I don't know what his deal is with uh, if he if Je- Justin Herbert's his guy, and I know they just paid him a pretty good big contract. Would he would he try to, to get J.J. McCarthy? Uh, thank you for the call, Jason. In a word, no. Nope. No. There's no way. I get the correlation there. I do, but. Yeah, I mean, Justin Herbert, that's maybe a reason why Jim went to take that job. I mean, he got his guy. Yeah, yeah, he got his guy. If anything, he's going to see if Justin Herbert can actually get over the hump. Yeah. That's his thing. And, again, the issue ain't been him. I feel like it's been more the coaches than anything. I do, too. I feel the same way about Justin Herbert. It's the same way I feel about J.J. McCarthy, too. That's an expanded conversation we might have to have still is – what you also got to look at is J.J. McCarthy's been, I'm talking about, supported. Yep. Supported by a massive run game and one of the best offensive lines in college. And a damn good defense. Yeah. And I, I, I correlate that to uh, Tua, mm. right, at, at Alabama. It, it took the right OC and coach and system to get Tua to right where place. he was. But Tua's time in Alabama was highly protected. Yeah. And with a great run game. Which one would you rather be forced to watch for two hours? Oh, Iowa offense in football or Virginia basketball? Iowa, uh, Iowa, Iowa. Really? Yeah, just because at least defensively they'd make some plays that right, were but exciting. So Virginia. Yeah, but the interceptions are just more fun to watch, right? And they could be turned into touchdowns. I think I, <laughs> I, I, 10 out of 10, I'm, I'm willing to watch a slow offense. Uh, bad offense uh, and, and football than I am basketball because basketball, I always I hold their athletes. It, it, I think they're probably the best athletes in the world with what they do. Ooh. And if you're a bad team in basketball, then I can't stomach watching it. It's just like watching the ball, like the ball bouncing around and you being bad as far as missing like layups. Like yeah. somebody missing uh, a, a block on a play, I can stomach that a whole lot better than you throwing the, ba- the ball against the backboard or you constantly bricking. Like, that to me is hard to stomach. Like, I will walk out of a bad basketball game. It's the game. sound that gets I'll me. I'll stay for a bad football game yeah. all day because I can put that in a box and say to myself, oh, man, that's just a great defensive game. And basketball, no, y'all cheeks out here, man. Like, you, oh, my God. Missing no. shots. See, you got me started. Bouncing now. off the rim. I ain't want to go this far. I don't want to go. I don't want to see that. And kind I'm of probably basketball. gonna have Savage hitting me up now. Oh, bad football is worse. He don't want to watch bad no basketball. Problem. Ooh, Slay right, tweeted done. last night, uh, it's putting me to sleep. Well, sure. So, 10 out of sure. 10. I know. Give me bad football. And I've been having trouble falling asleep this week, but last night it was easy. Just turn on the Virginia game. Oh, we could have been watching Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. We could have. Robbie been. Avila in Indiana State. I wanted to see his yep. legend grow. Mm-mm-mm. For some reason, I feel like I need to pause there. Uh <laughs> By the way, I'd be cautious of putting ACC teams forward in your bracket, too. I don't think the ACC really? was great. Nah. Mm. Nah. We'll Clemson? See. Nah. Is it just poop on ACC? Dude? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if we have enough sample size yet. I won't be taking sample sizes from their poop. <laughs> <laughs> kids are at school. We're good. <laughs> don't play with your poop, kids. <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> What is this, Step Brothers? And next, Stinky Johnson. <laughs> with, uh... <laughs> Inky Johnson's going to give us a little bit of midweek motivation. Tomorrow morning, Adam oh. Kaplan, Coach Mack, a little Vols preview as they take on the Peacocks of St. Peter's. Perhaps an upset special from each of us. 
Who's the double-digit seed most likely to reach the Sweet 16? We'll talk about that tomorrow as well. But right now, a little bit of Inky Johnson midweek motivation. When I find myself in uncharted territory, when I find myself in an unfamiliar place, when I find myself experiencing things that I've never experienced before, the first thing I do is I go outside of my comfort zone. Whereas most people, when they find themselves in uncharted territory, they retreat to their comfort zone. I go outside of my comfort zone because I feel as if I go outside of my comfort zone, it's going to force me to do things in terms of my faith, in terms of my belief, in terms of my hope that I've never had to do before. It's going to fortify my faith. It's going to fortify my belief. It's going to fortify my my hope. Like all of these things when I'm placed outside of my comfort zone, it's like when you up there and you, you let go of the safety net. Right? It's one thing when you watch them cats and they tight roping and they doing their thing and they got that, that hook and they know if they fall, they're going to get caught and they all good or something down below them that they can fall to. You're like, oh, that's cute. That's dope. Look at my man. He doing his thing. But that cat, that boy, that guy that's up there and it ain't nothing. Oh, my man on a totally different level in terms of his faith, in terms of his prayer, in terms of his training, in terms of his belief. Right? The next time you find yourself in uncharted territory, the next time you find yourself getting challenged by life, I challenge you, don't retreat back to your comfort zone. Put your belief system outside of your comfort zone. Hey, it's Kaylin Ramon with Window Nation, and March is finally here. Heck, we're almost done with March.